Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. I'm checking in to see how your week's going, and uh, obviously when we videotape this, you know that I have a special guest, and this special guest I've been trying to get on here to be a special guest for a long time, and all kinds of crap has happened, and I caught the flu, and then I had Ebola, and then there was the pandemic. Well, he's finally on... (laughs) Uh, He has a new special out called Josh Wolf Four Stories that you can get at fourstories.com. Fourstoriescomedy.com. Fourstoriescomedy.com. I never make a minute without doing making a mistake. Please welcome the one and only Josh Wolf. What's going on, man? We finally made it happen. I know. Here we are. This has been years in the making. It has. And I I I feel like it goes back to Big Poppy's Roast or no? Yeah. When was that? Was that before the pandemic? Pre-pandemic. By the way. One of the best weekends of my life. That was such a fun weekend. All right, let's set up. Uh, Big Poppy okay. was getting roasted. It was the end of his career, right? End of his career. And he wanted to get roasted, and we did it at the Hard Rock Cafe uh, right across the street from Fenway Park, and it was, uh, you know, oh, God. Who we, was, went, we went to- Lenny uh, Clark was on it. Rob Gronkowski was on it. Gronk, uh, Anthony Mackey, Pedroia, oh, who good. might have been the funniest one, because he told- Oh, he was hostile. He told that story about Poppy also, not knowing his name. Yeah, but he was also like mad at all the comics because they kept making fun of him. They kept making fun of him for being short. And then he turns around and he goes, unlike you guys, I wrote all my jokes. Yeah. I'm sitting there going, like, fuck you, you little shit. I wrote my jokes too. Yeah. He yeah. was fucking mad. He, he was, was mad. Yeah, no, but I also saw why he made it into the big leagues. I love Dustin Pedroia, he, but he, he was he was remember, he, he had had enough Adam of Ray, our non-athletic fucking miles it. running about him. Adam Ray dressed up. Remember, he has an old Yankee fan, so nobody yep. knew who it was. That was fantastic. And Pedroia was sitting next to me because I was sitting right next to him on the stage, and he was like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, <laughs> and he was so fucking mad that Adam kept referring to him as short. He was like, "Who's this fucking old dude?" Yeah, yeah I got to take shit from you guys and some old dude. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. And the thing was, he wasn't taking that much shit. No. It's just so many people told him he was short his whole life and that he wasn't going to make it to the big leagues. I mean, he had a story about that. I I think when he was trying to figure out what college to go to, they brought up like his height. And then like, uh, and then there was like one or two short jokes and his thermometer just went through Through the roof. roof. And I didn't say one short joke. I was like, you know what? He like by the time I get up there, he's gonna start swinging, <laughs> and this guy can hit one over over the green monster. I don't want I don't want to take this. So Gronk took the most, without a doubt. I got Lenny pretty good. By the way, Lenny to me might be the most <laughs> underrated. He's so funny, Lenny Clark. Uh, and, and by the way, I was I'm, my favorite joke I did was talking about his past cocaine use. He yeah. said if Lenny sneezed right now, the kids wouldn't have, well, they wouldn't have school until January. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was, and Lenny Clark, he went through eras. There, that was like sweatpant era Lenny Clark when he was just wearing sweats on stage. No, 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 he had the crazy outfit. He had, he had, he had the, the Crayola yellow oh. pants with the black thing and then something else yellow. I told him he looked like a Legoland <laughs> construction worker. Um, no, not, then he got into, yeah, no, there was, uh, there was young Lenny yep. with like the, the, the 70s hair and then it was mullet Lenny. Good. That's a good era. Lenny. And then it became big Lenny. Yeah. And then it became, uh, there was like two or three more Lenny's and then it became, then there was pull up Lenny. Did you ever Jacked. pull up Lenny? Jacked Lenny. Dude, this guy, he's like he's like 60-something years old. Jacked. We're doing comics come home, and he's on the Bruins pull-up bar, and he's he's going up and down like like he it looked like he when, when a young person puts an old man's suit on, yeah. they, they fuck with people. Yeah. But he was actually doing it. It made no sense. I, I always wondered also, because Lenny, I don't know what his top weight was, but it he was Oh, there was cigar Lenny. But how did cocaine cigar Lenny, Lenny get was, so fat? Lenny finished the cigar lit the other one with that one and just like he was like chain smoking cigars and then then the cigars went away yeah now it's just workout lenny that's what he that's where he is right now he's workout lenny right now that's where he is workout lenny (laughs) i've loved all the lenny (laughs) yeah me too (laughs) (laughs) there's been a lot of lenny there's been a lot of lenny's um 
Yeah, but I, when I was doing the roast, like as much as I was getting him, see, I, I, you know, I, you know, coming up in that scene, like he's one of the Mount Rushmore guys. So it's like also like, is he gonna get mad at me? You know, and he's not a little guy. No. Yeah, all of those guys are like six two, six three, and he's banging out like twenty pull ups, like he's looking for his mail. And I'm like, do I need, <laughs> do I need old school fucking Lenny to put the, the with his grip strength to be grabbing me by the neck? You definitely don't want to get beat up by a sixty eight year old. That's tough to explain. How, who's That's on your 56, Mount Rushmore? That, okay, of those Boston guys. Who would it be? Well, Mount Rushmore is only four people. Right. So I think it would be like, you remember when Tony Soprano did the, uh, uh, James Gandolfini did the cover of Cigar uh, uh, Ficcionato magazine. He yeah. goes, I'm only doing it if everybody's on. And it opened up and there was everybody. If you're going to really do it, um, it would be Leno. Because yeah. Leno, before there was even comedy clubs, I mean, he's literally the guy that took the beach. And then... Uh, then there was uh, then there was all the ding ho guys, Sweeney, uh, Don, Gavin, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, DJ Hazard, Tony V, Kenny Rogerson, Jimmy Tingle, Stephen Wright, Kenny Rogerson, that Frank name. Santarelli. Was Kenny Rogerson like Bell. ridiculously funny? I've heard oh. stories about Kenny Rogerson. Oh yeah, yeah. And what was great about him was I don't know if he wasn't from Boston or if he was just on his own wavelength. He didn't have like the so-called Boston style, like you know Boston people. We we you know I think we've mellowed, but we, like as crazy as we were, those guys were fucking maniacs. Mm -hmm. um, pull over in the car and beat the shit out of somebody half your fucking age, and not and then continue the conversation <laughs> like that level, crazy. Um, Kenny was like you know, so they all had like that rapid fire. You know, there was a lot of like the Don Gavin. Kevin Knox, how did I forget him? That rapid fire, you know, and I and I really feel like all of that is, it's just, you know, people that like think that fast and are going over here and now I'm over here. That's all like you had a fucked up childhood. Yeah. And at any second, something could happen. So you just, yeah. you, okay, what the fuck was that? Block that out. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about this over here. Like the older I get, like that's really like a lot, you know, oh my God, dad's taking off the belt. You know, it was like one, one of those deals. But like Kenny had like, um, he had a slower pace but he was still like a storyteller and everything, but he had like his own, just had John Panette was another guy. I mean, dude, the level of just standing ovation. Crazy. Cr like, I always forget a few guys. I said Steven. Yeah. I said Steven. He um, was my first live comedy concert. I remember seeing him in Hartford and I drove from my high school in Amherst and um, that hooked me because- I, I mean, that must, but every comedy show must be downhill after that. I mean, there's nobody like that guy. And that guy has, like, arguably the best jokes in stand-up history. Yeah. And just think about, like, and I'm just saying as far as, like, jokes. Not, like, storytellers or, like, you know, uh, uh, social commentary. I just mean jokes. That guy's fucking jokes. It's it's just... It, but to fill an hour with that many jokes is what got me. I'm like, this is all punchlines. It's like 180... It was or crazy. Possibly two. Well, he talks slow, so probably three a minute. It, that was amazing. the thing. Like I used to open for Brian Kiley, another amazing Boston comic, and he used to sit there going, like, you know, he goes, "Dude, I'm not. I don't tell stories like these other guys." He goes, "For me to do like 45 minutes, he goes, you got to understand that's like close to like 180, 200 jokes." And I was thinking about, like, I never fucking thought about that. And what's what I always loved about those joke guys is a lot of times there's like no segues. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, what, what tethers most people's acts together is I talk about this for six, seven minutes, and then I go to that and da-da-da, and there's sort of like this through line where they their jokes are so perfect. Brian Kiley, uh, um, Hedberg, <sighs> Stephen Wright, their jokes are so perfect that they can, they can go any. Like all of them are closers. Yes. All of them could be openers. All of, you know... You You're know, almost I, wasted in the middle because that's all they have is uh, great openings and closing the whole thing. But like, you have to remember all of those freaking jokes. Jackie I, the Joke Man, dude. Jackie I opened, the Joke Man. I don't know. I remember all those jokes. I opened for Cable Guy for about three years, and I was just sitting. I, my brother was like, "I'm not gonna come. I don't think he's my sense of humor." I said, "He tells 300 punchlines a night, so if he only hits 50, percent you're laughing 150 times." Yeah. And so my brother was like, I go, just come, free tickets. And after the show, he was like, I can't believe how many times I laughed. Yeah. 
Yeah, he said you're not gonna. There's no way you could laugh at all of them, but there are so many of them. Yeah. You're guaranteed a hundred laughs. That's a yeah, lot of I, laughs. I, uh, yeah, I can't do that. No, me neither. And I'm not even like a good joke writer. Me neither. I just go off on shit or like tell stories, but like, you know, it's funny. My daughter's really, she's seven now. She's really getting into jokes. So, you know, she has like, you know, she wants me to do like jokes, like tell some jokes. And I, I got like the level of thinking. <laughs> it's like, I don't do this. <laughs> what? I, I don't think. And then I just make up dumb jokes. But she my likes wife, that. My wife loves the dumb jokes. Do you ever open? Like how did Daryl throw out his back? I don't know how. From Hall and Oates. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a it's, dad joke. It's the worst joke yeah, ever. <laughs> no, but the thing is, is it's so bad. It's so fucking bad. She always puts her head down, shakes her head, and then starts laughing. But she's laughing yeah. because it is bad. And also kind of the story of that band. Like, he probably thinks he was carrying John, you know? Uh yeah, listen. That mustache alone has got to weigh at least 40 pounds. If there's one guy... Not to get in the middle of that. I love both of them, and I wish they would be on the same tour bus. Do you? And write some more. Yeah. But if there was one You don't one like guy... to see the Everly Brothers not like each other? Are they alive? Huh? The Everly Brothers? Yeah, they died. <laughs> they passed the torch to those Oasis guys. Those guys never get along. Two what? of the funniest fucking bastards I've ever seen in my life. Who? Those Oasis guys. Oh, yeah, dude. I love their seeing them Their jokes are better than their music, and their music sells out the O2 arena. I, th I hear they're getting back together. I like them so much more when they hate each other. It's, to me, so much more entertaining. So much more. It's... I would listen to a double album of them just shitting yeah. on each other. <laughs> if they made a mixtape <laughs> where in between every song they said some shit about each other, you know how, like, when I, I can't was... imagine if you were, like, the parents of them. And you just be just remember when they played in a sandbox, being like, "What the hell happened? Did, did, did we not take them to the fucking amusement park enough times? Like, how do you, how do you get to this point?" And that level of hate for your brother is so. I got three yeah. brothers. I mean, we disagree, but that level of hate for each other—that's reserved for. Yeah, you me know, and ev me and everybody in my family at this point, all my relatives. We all know what buttons not to push, and every once in a while you still do it. Yep. And then you start. All right, all right, all right. Forget it, forget it, forget it. Yeah, yeah. Not worth it. Not worth it. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. I don't want. I don't want to do this. And I just like every. But if I don't see them for a while, I forget, and then we start to get into it again. Yeah. It was like. Does your daughter has she heard your stand up? No, she knows. She goes. She always says, "Daddy, are you doing stand up tonight?" And I say, "Yeah." She goes, "Are you saying the bad words?" And I go, yeah. And she goes, why do you say the bad words? I go, because I, I don't know how to write a joke. <laughs> They're the PEDs of stand-up comedy. Yeah. Um, you know, Jacob started touring with me. My youngest son started opening for me. And how old is he? 27. It's been amazing, dude. It really, because, you know, one thing that you... Now, if he, he has a better set than you, how does that make you feel as a father? Oh, I just go up and... First, I'm proud, and then I make fun of him. Oh, you right. know, I can't have him win in the show. No, go. no. He, he, listen. You got to go a little great Santini. Yeah. <laughs> we, but we, he's, we do a, like a and a because so many of my jokes have been about him at the end of the set that he gets a lot of shots in at me. It's just fun. Oh, that's man. good. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. All right. You know what you should do? You should bring him up in the end. At the end? A after your set, you should bring him up and you guys should just trash each other. That's and, what we and, do. And the, oh, you do that. All yeah. right. Look at that. That's what we Look do. Me. Another non-original idea. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know what you should do, Josh? You should do what you're already doing. <laughs> well, tell me about this special. Now, is, is this special... Uh, it's, what, what are we talking about here? Is this is this a, a an older, wiser Josh Wolf? It's, Let's us in a little bit more. Yeah, you know what it is, man? It's something that I was told not to do a million times. I was told, don't, because the whole special is don't just for stories. Don't make fun of AIDS. No, AIDS that, is... That was the big thing when we were growing up. Don't bring up AIDS. <laughs> don't bring up AIDS. Now you before, can bring up AIDS. Well, just... they cured it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Thank Magic God. Johnson, Magic Thank Johnson Thank God cured Magic Johnson it. got right, it. If Magic right. Johnson didn't get it, like, they would still be like, hey, you know, you got I, about four years. When he got AIDS and got healthier, I was like, come on, guys. Yeah, well, he had HIV. It never went into right, the, the right, thing. Right, yeah, right. It, it, he doesn't, it doesn't even show up in his system anymore. Is that right? Yeah. He, I, this special, No AIDS, 
But I mean, I never looked at his medical records, but that's what they that's said. Funny. I they just were love how, the blood test just to you? How, how quickly I just yes, the, the, I can confirm that. <laughs> Didn't everybody kind of become a doctor during the pandemic? Why can't I do that now? <laughs> okay, have you have you ever said to your doctor, "Hey, I googled and looked at their face." When you tell your doctor, "Hey, I googled this," the all the blood runs out of their oh, face. Yeah. They must be so mad. They're like, "I went twelve years." I learned shit. You think Google beats 12 years. And yeah, everyone's what, like, that yeah. would be like if, if you did your act and then somebody walked up to you with the joke book and being, all right, listen to this one. Oh, dude, that's basically what it is. But the problem is, is it's not the fucking doctors. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the FDA and the pharmaceutical companies and the fact that nobody is watching them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and the food supply is making everybody sick. And then they give you these things that fix what the food did to you. But then the side effect gets you into the hospital. You're just basically this vehicle for them to make money off. That's right. Of. Yeah. Like, you know, those psycho moms that are slowly killing their kids so they can fucking get attention, you know, when they die. I feel like that's what like everybody in power is doing to their own people, well, which the- I think is fantastic because eventually someone will invade this country and they'll have made everybody so fucking sick that they'll actually have to fight the war. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, I look at there. There are people in this country that like, okay. who are these people? You ever go, you, you work out and I, I, I went to the gym recently. I, try, I, mean, I was I looking for a trainer, way. and they had this. Were you looking for a blonde, twenty six? No, maybe bullet, bullet tits. thirty two. Bullet tits. Bullet tits, like the fifties. Bullet tits. <laughs> Getting out of a Ford Thunderbird convertible. <laughs> do you know there was? Hey, Daddy O. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go do some jumping jacks. Uh, do you know the uh, this, the one and only time? And I'm telling this story on stage, so I won't get into it. But there was one and only time that I hired, that I called for a hooker. She had one fake tit and one real one. And she couldn't, she told me, she was like, I couldn't afford to get them both done at the same time. It was the craziest. They looked so, so good in the bra, wait. dude. They took off the bra and one of them just kind of. Oh, so one sagged, but they were still the same size. Uh, hard to say when one looks like it just had a stroke, you know, and the other one is looking straight ahead at you. It was really hard to really judge the side. It was so distracting, dude. Did you ever set up a benefit so she could get her other titty? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> the one titty benefit? <laughs> I it was. I did not keep in touch with her. Hey, believe I it or participate not. in human trafficking, but that doesn't mean I don't help people. <laughs> Yeah, oh. uh, bullets is not a term. Do you believe in a I've god heard. that cares? Like when I just hear stories like that, I'm just like, he just makes shit and he just moves on. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like well, he- this fucking asshole who fixed the air conditioning in my house, and he just, you know, the the the, the crawl space to get up, the, you know, the hole, it wasn't enough, so he just fucking hacks it out with like this hatchet, and then they put this half-ass thing that they painted while it was in there, so the borders are still okay. And I asked the guy to come back like nine fucking times, he still hasn't come back. He's like, what's the problem? Like, what do you mean, what's the problem? You cut a hole you in my ceiling. You ever see Toy Story when yeah. Tom Hanks loses his fucking arm? That's that's what this my, my crawl space looks like. <laughs> finish it off, make it look nice, and finish painting the fucking do thing. Do you have anything in the crawl space? Uh, no, no. I have an old house. It's costing me a fortune. It's just it's, That's all it is. It's a crawl space. You can't put anything up there. You know, I have like, you know what I have? I have like my, my carry on luggage that I never yeah. use. Like any, no comic. No, not carry on. I'm sorry. Uh, check luggage. Yeah. No comic brings that. That's like what your wife brings when you go on vacation and you're just looking at her like, yeah. you're not going to wear that shit. Why do you have four suitcases? We, I had you're a- going to wear the same fucking outfit every single day. Two nights we're going to go out to dinner and you can just have like two different outfits and you would be good. I'm going to wear the same pants and different t-shirts. Yeah. That's my vacation. Malcolm Young. That's it. Malcolm Young. That's the way to go. Did you have brothers and sisters? Well, they didn't die. You have brother, you, yes, do you have brothers? Yeah, I do. Did you, because in our attic growing up, we had the only we had just a couple of trunks that had old hand, hand-me-downs. Oh, so winter we wore clothes. hand-me-downs. The winter clothes would go up there, and then we had like hand-me-downs, which, you know, I don't know why. I, I think family's going to start doing that, the way these people at the top are taking all the fucking money. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, these fucking immigrants... Coming into this country. How long, how, they, every election, they get away with the immigrant thing. Yeah. It's not the fucking 10 cunts at the top with 15 infinity pools. It's the guy floating over on a mattress from Cuba. Um, 
Yeah, so we had like, yeah, the winter clothes were up there, and then the winter clothes would come down, and you would be psyched. And I, I remember like hand me downs were exciting because I, w- I was second in line. So they weren't too like ratted up. I was so last. I, so I would, yeah, so I would be looking at my older brother and just being like, oh, yeah, man, I'm getting that shirt in two years. That, that's pretty cool. I did a benefit recently for this, uh, this hockey team. You know, hockey stuff is expensive, and I was joking about that, how like the families that like hockey families, if you like weren't rich, you had a bunch of kids. So then it like financially made sense. And, and like the oldest kid got all the new hockey equipment and then it just got passed down through like five or six kids. That's right. And by the end, it would be like 1987. You're like the youngest kid and you're still wearing those leather skates yeah. with like the steel blades, yeah. you know, out there looking looking like fucking Rocket Richard. And you, you had like a straight stick. It didn't even have a fucking bend in it or anything. Yeah. My mom I got used a Stan to, Makita. She, my mom used to try to, to sell... A, Every she'd be like, look, look, try to sell it like they were new clothes. <gasps> look at this! I'm like, I'm last out of four oh, yeah. boys. Uh, there's, there's a mustard stain. Don't try to sell me like that. No, you know what was the best was the three quarter sleeves, Ugh. and then they would get holes in the elbows, and then it became a short sleeve shirt, oh. and then and then it went into the summer trunk. Jeans became shorts all Jeans the time. Became, oh yeah. You know, I think. And I then t- our sneakers were washable. Oh my god. Sneakers were washable. You started the first day of school in like boats. They were like a size, a size and a half too big. Everybody was like skating on their new sneakers. By October, they were filthy. And around Christmas, they started to fit. And in April, your toes started curling up (laughs) and you weren't getting new ones until (laughs) August. And it wasn't even like people were broke. It was just like, like there wasn't Instagram with everybody looking brand new. But we had depression era parents, dude. We had our parents, well, parents, were parents from the parents, right? That. Yeah. And so they, that was a little bit more of, we got to use this until the wheel. I think I, I told you White this. women didn't want big lips when we were growing up. I know. Or asses. <laughs> that's, that's all Instagram. I was at the airport the other day and I saw two women. They had the same lips. Like they literally went to the same, like, oh my God, where did you get that? Like she liked her <laughs> fucking dress or something. And they were sitting there. They looked fake as shit and they looked the exact same and they were hanging out. Maybe they, maybe, maybe they, they were related. Yeah, maybe they were. Maybe no, they, no. There's something about uh, when you get work on your face. All of a sudden, your face becomes shiny. Like you always look like you just got out of a steam room. They, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. The Twitter guy looks like that. Yeah. The Twitter guy always looks like he just got done playing half court basketball. <laughs> I also though, and he's, he's wearing like everybody a sport starts coat. to look exactly the same. After one or two plastic surgeries, there's only so much you can do. Everybody kind of looks like my I, well, Michael for Jackson. a while. Frozen face, which has gone away. Yeah, there was a moment. Frozen face was like a status symbol. Like you would, uh, like, um, like Beverly Hills. You'd go out to like Malibu and stuff. And you know, my wife breaks all of that shit down. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing with the, with these the, the, these faces? And she's just going like, you know, that's what that's what rich people do. And and if you it became like a time like if you didn't have work done, it was almost like you were driving like an economy car. Yeah, you were <laughs> like you were that was meant you were the one of the poor. Yeah, if you didn't have a shiny face. But I also think like guys like like Tom Cruise came back one time where his face was just full and hair still dark, and you're like, just say I got a bunch of shit in my face. Don't show. Oh, did up. he do something? Oh, dude, Tom Cruise came. This was probably pre, not the like two Mission Impossible's ago, and he just came back with full face Tom, and you're like, you dude, you, but what? What is the problem? Like, why just be like, yeah, dude, I know I look completely different, and I and I know I'm 70 and I don't have any gray was, hair. He came back at 60 and looked like he was just did the Outsiders. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> By the way, one of my all time favorite. Dude, how about Tom Cruise? Like, he's on top for forty straight years. I mean, like, it's, there's a handful of people, handful in a well, hundred years. I was thinking about to this too. If you think about the Stones, since the mid '60s, they've been selling fifty thousand tickets a night. That's insanity. Oh, no, it me. is insane. I'll tell you what was crazy is their bass player Bill Wyman quit the band thirty years in. And they have now gone on and toured longer than he was in the band. That's insane. He was probably thinking like, all right, I'm fucking, because he was older than everybody yeah. else. He's still alive. The guy's almost 90. And he was just think, probably thinking, I got enough money. This shit's going to go on another 10 years. Am I even going to be alive in 10 years? Yeah. Let me just fucking chill out. And, and I'm not saying it was a bad decision, but there's no way he thought, you know, if I, 
like I think he quit in early like I, I always look at them like they broke in, in 64 but they were probably together 63 62 so he quit around 92 so he was there the first 30 years they've gone on now it's 32 years later there's no way he was like I, he, you're right he was probably thinking I can they're gonna tour 10 more years but I got enough money I don't need that 10 years but I bet you he's thought once or twice in the last 30 you know what's years amazing about that band is Bill Wyman left and they replaced him with the black guy and then Charlie Watts died and replaced him with Steve Jordan, another black guy. So like that band is slowly becoming <laughs> the four tops. No, a black band. And they've always been when they came out, they were doing blues music. Yeah. Now they weren't they weren't they gave credit, but it was just sort of like they were a white band doing black music. And then eventually when as all of them die, if they continue this, they're gonna become an all black band doing a white band that was ripping off black music. <laughs> It's like Robert Downey Jr.'s character. In, in, yeah, I'm that dude yeah. pretending to be another dude. <laughs> That's the same thing. I have to go see them. Um, I've only seen them once. I saw them on the Steel Wheels tour in 1989 at Sullivan Stadium. Oh, shit. Yeah, and this was... Sullivan Stadium. Yeah, and this is yeah. before they had, like, the big... The big... Where the screens would be, it just said Bud Light. And I remember that. I was like, oh, fuck, they're selling out because they did that. So Mick Jagger was, like, that big. I didn't really even see him. Bill Wyman was still in the band. Charlie was still alive. <clears throat> but... um. Steve Jordan is one of my favorite drummers of all time. Yeah. Of of all time. Like in in his entire career. There's some album he did that I've been trying to find. It's out of print. Um he did a fusion album. Is some somebody was telling me and I've been trying to find that thing because you know he he plays like he he doesn't play any unnecessary notes. And fusion, you know, was the opposite of that where yeah. it was just like it wasn't like you were you were playing too many, but it was definitely really busy. And I just wanted to be like, what? I just such a fan. I want to hear like, what did that part of his career sound like? What year was that? Um, it was somewhere in between the Blues Brothers and him getting uh, in the Letterman band. He yeah. was the original drummer in the Letterman band, and it was either right after he left the Letterman band or right before he got into it. I forget, but um, there's a couple of killer fusion albums out there. There's a band Brand X, which is Phil Collins. It was funny, like our whole generation knew him as this Susudio guy. Yeah. And dude, if you listen to that album, I mean, he he he's one of the fucking greatest drummers uh, of all time. And he became like a front man when Peter Gabriel left Genesis, and then then they had Mike and the Mechanics. I can't even keep up with it, like all of those offshoots of those groups. But like, he is such an insanely talented musician. I don't think I know exactly what you mean by fusion. Fusion, okay, the first thing you notice is it's hard to listen to. Okay, that's <laughs> ringing endorsement. Yeah, no, it's, it, Fusion was basically uh, jazz musician. and I think, I want to say it started with Miles Davis, Bitches Brew, and what he was doing was he was taking from all of this rock and funk and all that stuff, and he was, he was fusing it together uh. with jazz, and then it kind of became, there was this amazing era, some of it not so good, some of it great, where it was like Fusion which I think then led to like uh, uh, progressive music, which was, you know, rock music taken to another level that was like in all of this odd time and all of that, which I think a lot of it, even if it wasn't influenced by what Miles was doing, it was just the boredom of like, if you play in a band and, and every song is in four and your hand just keeps coming down on two and four, it you, you start it starts to feel like a loveless marriage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah I bet. Like, like Groundhog Day, like, oh my God, how, how can I do this? Unless you're playing to something that's really stripped down like ACDC, like I've never gotten tired playing along to like ACDC albums, but then like a lot of the rock bands that came after that, everything was like in four and all that, which I've never understood. Why you wouldn't like in the course just throw in like just play in seven or something like that just to sort of switch it up? I think honestly, like as an artist, I would that's exactly how I would think. But if you were writing music just for people listening, I bet you your idea is like, let's keep it the way they like it. Well, that's that's the money behind the yeah. album, I, I think was yeah. was always was always doing that, but uh I don't know. I listened to the like, first the first concert I ever went to. Oh, great one! I saw the Police and REM opened up for him. It was a Synchronicity tour. Oh wow! And that's a great one. I remember the guy who took me. I, I my parents wouldn't obviously. They were like, "We don't want to go, and you can't go by yourself." 
And I found that my, one of my oldest brother's friends was like, I want to go, but I don't want to see the police. I want to see the band that's opening up for him. And I, he, I was like, who is that? And he said, R.E.M. And I had never heard of yeah. R.E.M. But we went early and there were barely anybody in the stadium. That's killer. But they were amazing. Oh, amazing, amazing. It was the first time in the police live during the synchronicity tour. I wasn't tour. allowed amazing. to like R.E.M. until the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I just grew up in a very sports yeah, yeah. jock town. Yeah. It's the end of the world. As that would be the end of me. I would get the shit kicked out of me. It's just like you could not, you had to listen to all, all of it was, you know, Motley Crue and that type of stuff, which I still, I, you know, I still love all of that music. And I'll tell you this, you know, grossly underrated Motley Crue album is the one they did with John Karabi that one in 1994. And they didn't want to call the album Motley Crue because right. Vince wasn't in it. Right. And then they gave into the fucking label and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I think if they didn't call it Motley Crue, that could have been so interesting. Like, even if they just had a two, three album run with that guy because he was an incredible singer yeah. and guitar player. So they went from sort of like a power trio to having all of a sudden they had a rhythm guitarist underneath what Mick was playing. And Mick writes, you know, killer riffs. Um, we saw Motley Crue at the bowl. Mm -hmm. And so Vince Neil, they opened up and they had this giant circular staircase where okay. he was going to run down. And midway down, he started to get a little winded. Because he oh, was... Vince did? Yeah, this was, you know, in the mid-2000s. <laughs> he started to get a little winded. And so he was singing Kickstart My Heart, and he would run to one side of the stage, but he was so winded, he'd go, ah, yeah, and he would just lean the microphone out so other <laughs> people would sing. He was out of breath. When he tried to run across, he was just grabbing his sides and shit like he was cramping up. But it's so hard for me to watch. <laughs> Listen, know. dude, that guy's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, all right, people sure. need to be a little more for forgiving sure. of Vince. But uh -oh. but listen, I, I I love old school stuff. I love. I mean, I, I it's one of the things that I push down my kids' throats. I told you, I think. When I played baseball in Little League, I played <laughs> like with a- you said that like you were angry with it. I told no. you. How yeah. many fucking times I got to go through this? But I, I played with a, like a four-finger baseball glove that was signed by Warren Spahn. That was the glove. We had hand-me-downs. Like, so we've I, I've always- Oh, wait. Loved... You told me that your, your grandfather made the gloves- For the Boston Braves. For the Boston Braves. He, he the last time we wait, took- Wait, how him... does a four-finger glove like, work? It was like, a, like one of those. So it didn't oh, like have one for everything. West. Yeah, it was one of these. It had one big one in the middle, right? It was signed by NWA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Warren Spahn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, the last time we took him to Fenway Park, he we were sitting up in a box, and he said, you know, I saw Babe Ruth pitch here. And I was like, what? And he, Which is like saying I saw Paul Bunyan chop down a tree. Babe, right. Saying Babe Ruth... And um, I, we were all like, and then he said, I think he would have been so much better if he hadn't drank so much beer. I was like, I think he was still pretty good. I think he still, but it was You know amazing. my theory? I've always teased Yankee fans going like, dude, you, you're telling me this fat guy was could win a Cy Young and hit fucking 700 home runs? I'm like, it was an all-white beer league. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? And I always go like how, if you notice, like, the last guy to hit 400 is before... Jackie Robinson comes in. And if you look back in the late 1890s or whatever, like three guys would do it a year. Mm -hmm. And then by the 1920s, it became like a guy would do it like every two to three years. And then it was Ted Williams did it and no one ever did it again. Yeah. Because all the Pedros and, and Gibsons and all that were allowed into the league. And that was my theory. And then fucking Otani comes along and it's just like, all right, <laughs> how, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. How awesome is it to watch him play? I I honestly love it's it's as a baseball fan it's amazing as yeah. a Patriots fan watching him being like oh yeah it was my interpreter and Babe just like nothing yeah, to yeah. see here <laughs> yeah they did sweep that yeah. under the rug and then and then with us they uphold the investigation of the owner of the losing team like oh this is this is this is factual <laughs> it's like all right okay all right yeah they really did kind of give him a pass but he's the whole fucking league he is the whole league and that's that's what's going on and, and I'm telling you right now what, what's going on with sports right now like I I feel like with Kansas Kansas City like Kansas City is the whole league right now yeah. because they're waiting like like Patrick Mahomes needs his Peyton or Brady and there's just they he doesn't have one right now and that's how that the whole time I've been watching this league it's always been the two top guys 
going at it, the two top quarterbacks, and then they'd have great teams, and there'd be these epic Super Bowls and playoff games or regular season games. I mean, the Colts weren't even in our division, and they made sure that we played them every fucking every year. year. Yeah. So you'd have another Brady, Brady, Peyton Manning thing. And I just feel like right now, like Patrick Mahomes is twiddling his thumbs. There's a bunch of people like at the B plus. I think they're trying to do level. it with Lamar Jackson. Like they put, they make sure they play every year. And they're trying to do it with him. He just can't beat Mahomes. Dude, Although this is uh, well, the game all, dude, this weekend first of all, was crazy. First of all, the Ravens are going to have to win by at least 17 to beat the, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Because the amount of money the Chiefs are making. At the end of the day, it's a business. And you got Taylor Swift. And she's, she's making people in the South Pacific watch the fucking yeah. game. I mean, <laughs> they got Lamar Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it's a business. Yeah. It's a yeah. fucking there's a yeah. reason why they can fucking manhandle people on the final drive. I get it. Yo, some of those calls in the end zone, and I'm not a conspiracy dude, but some of those calls in I'm the a end businessman. Z- yeah. Business that's what it is. is fucking business. Yeah. And that's it. As much as there's fifty thousand Coca Colas, the red can is still the one. That's their moneymaker. That's it. So that Do that's you think it. the league wants a three peat? I think they want the story. Because right now, right now, there's just, there's not like, uh, like the Buffalo thing was exciting and then it didn't pan out. The Stefan Diggs, Josh Allen thing. They're fucking stories, dude. This yeah. is, they're, they're, like, every year there's these stories. That's what the fuck they're selling. That's the game within the game. So that hasn't worked out. Uh, they look like they were coming back. And then the last two weeks, they're getting their asses kicked. So now it's like maybe it's the Ravens. They, want, they wanted Rodgers to be, they wanted the Jets. Yeah, to like, do well. oh my God. They like wanted the, the Jets to do well. Like, yeah, and I feel like then they went into, they probably go into panic mode of like, oh my God, that massive market, all of these old guys like me, like I'm a Pats fan. I'm rooting for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I don't want to see pe- that people are mortal. Yeah. I want to see this guy live for fucking ever. And then the first fucking game, you know, that stuff happens. And then all of a sudden, dude, that's like a vacuum. That storyline is gone. I will say, uh, like, there's a bunch of guys that are amazing. Like, like Brock Purdy took me a minute, and I'm like, no, this guy is the real deal. That mm-hmm. guy's a he's a great quarterback. I love seeing Geno Smith. You know, finally, after all of these years. But I didn't s- like him when he first came in the league, but I love him now. That, but, that Seattle uh, Lions game was fantastic. But, but did you see the Seattle lose to the Giants yesterday on uh, a blocked field goal? I know, but the Giants, historically speaking, dude, they they they're just a great organization, and they have a great they always have a great defense. But they got Daniel Jones, dude. It, okay, but Daniel Jones now has protection. I've been shitting all over Daniel Jones, going not that I think he's like horrific, but it, you're gonna give the guy seventy million dollars, you know? But yeah, who? I'm a fucking comedian. What the hell do I know? But now I'm seeing like they beefed up their line, yeah, and he has time, and he's a big fucking dude. But I always wondered... And he's got a great arm. He does, and he can run. But I always wondered, you know, he has one eye that Googles a little bit. I always wondered if that helped him as a quarterback, that he could see both sides of the field, oh, or if Jesus. that hurt him a little bit. Oh, jeez. Well, little what hurt him was bit. when he was running for a touchdown and he tripped over nothing. Yeah, that that's became, not good. That became his butt fumble. That's the thing. You can do that in a different market. Like, what's his face? Uh, uh, Sanchez, he could have run into the ass of his lineman. Not in New York. In Carolina, no, nobody would have fucking saw mm-hmm. that. He did that on like a Sunday night game in New York, and that was it. I'm spitting here, sorry. By the way, y- you know, th- those are the kind of things also, that, that butt fumble, I'm sure wherever he goes, he still hears butt fumble. A thousand percent that will follow him until the day he dies, until somebody does something worse in a Jets uniform. I no, think that's I how feel that like works. until sports fans figure out that sports is not going to fill that void, yeah, and they actually work out their own shit, because as much as sports fans love seeing success, they also love seeing failure, mm-hmm. because it gives them something like, dude, I went to that that uh, I went to that um, Huskies Michigan game, <clears throat> and this kid came down at the end of the game when the Huskies locked it up. A kid, twenty two years old, and he was yelling shit. At the Michigan players, that was so bad. They turned around like... For real? Yeah, and then some trainer had to come over and be like, dude, I will fuck you up. And then he turned around. He's like, what's he getting so mad for? And it was like he just completely... Like, you just look at him and it's like, dude, you watch sports for that moment. That's right. You want to... Like those, you know, um, those fans, like you watch it so you can like rub it in. I hate people like that. Like they, It's like you're not, you're not like... 
You're not – again, those guys also, they're the ones that leave with 10 minutes left when their team's getting killed because they, they can't take the shit. They're just there. Yeah. I, I knew this comic in fucking New York, right? I didn't hear from that guy since game three of 2003. Yeah. I didn't hear from him for fucking 10 years. And then right before we won in 2013, remember we had that year where we just choked in September? We had a bunch of injuries and stuff. And he out of the fucking – dude, I'm talking like an eight-year gap. I don't accept up, shit talk from that, up, people like that. That's what I said. I, I haven't talked to him since. Nah. I'm like, dude, you're a fucking clown. Yeah, I don't accept you're shit talk. You're a fucking clown. Where the fuck have, have you, you been? been? Yeah. Where have you been? I don't he, accept he, You know what I call it? The whack-a-mole fans. Yeah. Goes good. They pop up and they yeah, talk yeah. all that shit. <laughs> no, I lost a lot of respect for him. I, I will. You, I'm so glad you went and saw a game up there. It's one of my favorite places to see a game up there yeah. in Seattle. It's such a cool stadium. And dude, it's right on the water. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you could take Dude, the, you can bring your wife there if she if she's not even a fan, just just go over on a boat. Yeah. That alone. What were you doing up there? You doing a show? I was up there for the game, so when I I played a casino in Tacoma because I uh had just I had just played Seattle. Yeah. And my wife was up there and you know, and me and all the other comics and the crew, because I, I was shooting something up there, we all did a day out on this boat. And we went through the little channel. We, as you come through the channel, uh, it's funny because they're taking you to see like Bill Gates and the you guy who's drive by his Silver. house. Well, the, you're on like the boat, so it's funny. Like there's millionaires on this side of the bridge, then you go under the bridge, and then it becomes billionaires. So we're like riding through, and I'm looking at the how I sort of turned around, and then like there was the stadium. Well, first of all, when you go through the canal, they have all like the crew, yeah. you know, all the uh, the rowing teams, and they have like all of this, the fraternities and all this stuff written on the side. So it was really cool. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, uh, this is where the Huskies campus is. It's right on the water. This is, like, beautiful. And then we came to the other side, and I turned around. I saw the stadium. I'm like, that's the Husky stadium? And I'm like, dude, we got to go to a game. And my buddy looked it up. You know, we're all, like, Michigan. I like Michigan and LSU. And I was like, oh, man, we got to go to that game. We got to go to that game. So, um, you know. I, I lived up it. there when Cobain got – when Cobain killed himself. Uh-huh. So that was allegedly, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get to it my was house. The CIA and Courtney Love working together. Yeah, I couldn't get that. to my house for two days when, because I had a, 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 a New York license at the time, mm -hmm. and they weren't letting anyone on the street because there were so many looksy loos, and, and I had to park. Oh, you lived down the street. I lived down the street. On, on a part of uh, um, in up there called Leshai. We used to see him out by the water in just this long trench coat and the hat that had flaps mm -hmm. and these crazy glasses just sitting on a park bench. And I was like, that's fucking, just by himself, that's fucking Kurt Cobain. But, just but, join looking at the water. Who doesn't like to do that? Well, he was probably sweating off some heroin, but, but it was, <laughs> it, it was, Jesus, everybody's getting it. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, can you let him rest in peace? <laughs> he would look pretty restful. I'm not going to lie to you. He wasn't too active at the time. But, well, yeah, if he was on heroin, he would be standing up, fucking nodding off on your street. That was, man, I started in Seattle with Joey Diaz and Brody. And, at a place. How did you end up? You're a Boston guy. How did you end up in Seattle? Honestly, because... No, lie to me. Uh, because, because... <laughs> yeah, I do hate it when people say that. Because I, want, I was looking for a place where I, there was a ton of stage time. And not just five minutes at a time. Seattle was giving you 15 minutes at a time. All right, can I ask you a question? What was the name of that club? Comedy Underground. The guy Terry. Giggles. Oh, giggles. Yeah, I used to play there. That guy died, right? Terry was not a good dude. Oh no! I remember the end of the weekend. Do you remember those 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 look like a shoebox when you bought new baseballs? They used to come in a big box yep. for some reason. So he had that filled up with fives, tens, and twenties all mashed together, being like, "Hey, here you go." I figured I'd give you like because he wasn't paying tax. I wonder what the fuck he's doing. I go, dude, I'm not going through airport security <laughs> with this titty bar money. And dude, it wasn't it wasn't even like stacked. stacked it was or, just yeah. thrown in there. It was like this is some Don King shit. Like you know Don King's thing. No. If he had if he had a fighter and he was like a street guy, he would be like, all right, if you he owed you three million, he goes either that or I'll give you seven hundred fifty in cash. He goes these street guys will always take the cash, and he used to fuck him that way. That's what it felt like. Like he was like, and I was living in New York, and he was gonna give me a shoebox full of five tens and twenties. And I, by the time I land in Newark, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> That's the thing. He would say to you, you don't need to count it. I, it's all there. I'm like. How, this is a 
a box full of ones, I gave him dude. nonstop shit, and he seemed to like it. But I remember he would like trash the younger comics coming up, say, saying to their face, "You're not going to make it." He was an interesting, and he was a he was Mormon, so he would always say, "I can't do that because I'm Mormon." I'm, I'm like, "But you're you're oh, f bombing no, no, this no, dude no, no, up no. and that's, down." That's just an excuse. Yeah. That's like me. I got to go home. I got kids. Great that, that's not that's not true. It's like yeah. I, I want to get out of here. It's the best reason to have ah, kids. My so. wife, I got to do something with my wife tomorrow. It's just like no, I just I got to be up early. I got to take the kids somewhere tomorrow oh, morning. Oh my god, my kids! They get up at like five in the morning. They don't. They sleep till like seven thirty. Yeah. And people are like, dude, your kid's twenty seven. I'm like, I know, but I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm there for them. Yeah, I, yeah. If you don't have kids and you move to a new city, just say you have a kid. I'm telling you, it is like it's the one excuse. Bulletproof. Oh my god, bulletproof. I got a kid, man. I I gotta, you know. I used to, the, the, that was always my excuse. If I didn't want to, or if I needed to leave somewhere early, oh yeah, I just got a call from the house. I got to go home. One of the kids is sick. Yeah, they got the sniffles. Yeah. It's the easiest excuse because nobody's going to be, what are they going to be like, fuck your kids. Yeah. Nobody's going to say that. I mean, yeah. somebody might, but. As opposed to having to like, you know, listen to the, these fucking alcoholics. Now, come on, man, hang out. Hang out. It's like, dude, I'm sorry you have nothing to go home for. That's my favorite thing. Like the comic, not married, no kids. Yeah. Come on, man, hang out. Don't be a pussy. I'm like, hang out. Yeah. It's just like, no, nah, dude. I, I'm, I got people that like, like me. Yeah. I open the door <laughs> and there's, no, there's noise. Hey, yeah, yeah. how are you? I don't open door to a, like a quiet, sad apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and a half-eaten ham sandwich. I did that. I did that. I that, and that's when I my drinking was the worst. I used to literally when I was on the road. I would stay out until I was almost going to fall asleep. So I would go back to the hotel and I wouldn't have to deal with the loneliness. And then, cause you know, when you, for some, there's some reason like going to, to bed alone is lonely. Waking up alone, easy. Yeah. Waking up alone is, ah, I'm going to go to the gym, going to get some fucking breakfast. I don't have to deal with anybody else's needs. Waking up alone, fantastic. Going to bed alone, brutal. Bill, I want to tell you, the thing that I that has changed the most about me since I started touring with my son is I don't think I realized just how lonely I was out there. Oh, yeah. Like, you, I would go eight hours without talking to a oh, human. Yeah. yeah, I've been there. You, you know, where you're, I'm like, oh, I didn't say a word to a human being. I used to pride myself on that. Oh, did <laughs> I used to try to go, like, the whole day. Oh, yeah, it's Can easy. I go the whole day until I meet that college rep? Where I'd be like, hi, I'm the comedian. Oh my God, we're so happy to have you <laughs> at fucking East Bumfuck Community College. We don't have a stage, there's no microphone, and no one knows there's a show. Yeah, and nobody's ever heard of you. This is a free show. Yes, nobody's ever heard of <laughs> yeah. you. We just thought you would go up there and just start talking yeah. and everyone would gather around like it was a musical. Like everyone's going to just sit down Indian style. Oh, those college gigs, I think, were my... Although corporate gigs pay a lot, and, but some of those can be brutal because some people don't know they're there for uh, a, the corporate gig when they make you eat dinner with them uh, and you're like you're their little play thing for these you know oh fuck that that's a deal breaker I don't like uh, I did my first corporate gig and it ended up being a great one but like uh, I haven't done one in like I think like 15 years the last time I did one I was at the win and it was a bunch of oil guys from like Texas or whatever and they were fucking hammered and they were in Vegas and they didn't want to see you no they just wanted they wanted me to go up there and tell them all to go fuck themselves yeah and I was you know, like an idiot I was trying to do my act and at one point I was making fun of them because it was this massive oil spill and I was just making fun of how much they didn't care I'm like well you know what that's that fucking bird's fault for landing in the goddamn oil am I right and they didn't get it they were all like yeah and I was just like <laughs> hundred bottles of beer in a wall hundred bottles of beer like oh my god when do I get the fuck out of here oh yeah it was like yeah it was awful and they didn't and I remember the way they treated me was unreal yeah like they flew me out there the wind picked me up and they had a, like a Rolls Royce. It was funny. I'm dressed like this. I get in the fucking thing. And I remember the back door opened like a suicide door. And in the door was an umbrella. That It's a Rolls Royce umbrella. And I, I just thought that was the funniest fucking thing. Just in case? I don't know. I felt like the penguin in Batman. Like I was going <laughs> to I was going to have this freaking. Yeah, in case it rained in the desert, right? And then uh, I went. I just knew. I, I knew it was going to suck. They always suck. Christmas parties suck. Private gigs suck. Uh. College gigs were a were a pick 'em. Yep, that's a puck puck and a half. It's hard now with the college gigs because they have 
And I stopped doing them because they have all these rules about things you cannot talk about. Yeah, and what's funny is the kids don't give a fuck. Nah. They could completely give a fuck and you and, and they want you to go up there. But what what's what's happening is though, I feel like they're sitting on these kids' chests and they're they're just gonna they're gonna they're all gonna go Jim Morrison. Hell yeah. Like this next generation of comedians I think is gonna be amazing after like the level of like uh oppression it's almost like the 1950s in a way while not being the 50s and then the 60s all of this you know lenny bruce came out in the 50s and then you had like carlin and Pryor and all of these guys and then it, it just it's already broke changing o- broke though. open in the 70s yeah it's already like all that cancel shit is i think in the past oh dude it, i mean it, it, well it got so out of control it went from like, we need to get people that are sexually assaulting people out of the business to hey I don't like the subject matter of your act. Did you say it's, Jew? It's just like, like what? what? What just happened? Yeah. What just happened? It it really was crazy to see how I, because- I just feel like you're punching down. <laughs> it's like yeah. Yeah. Punching down takes skill. Punching up and then you just an echo chamber of fucking who wants to stand there? Well, I know somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to stand there and just get applause no by the way also like yay we all agree one of the f- best things and you tell me if you think the same i love making people uncomfortable and people are like well there's no way we're ever gonna laugh here tonight again and then you fig you bring them all back together that's kind of a fun thing yeah. to do. Or making them think that you agree with them and then at the last second you say something really stupid. And they're yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, Wait a second, he's not on my side. Yeah, but then they laugh because it's they know you're being ridiculous and you're just being a dick and then it becomes like a show. I don't uh, I don't understand that like uh, that that echo ch- echo chamber comedy. I don't I don't get it. Like but- everyone in the crowd is just like you. Um I I don't, you know. I don't know. It's also not fun. It, it, and there's no... I kind of like, at this point... Irritating people. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! And then getting them on your side. That's kind of fun to do. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I, 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 Hey, Josh, that's our love language. You know, toxic people do that. You, know, you call them out on doing some shit, and they go, oh, that's just like my love language. It's like, well, why don't you just say you love me and yeah, do loving it's things? It's so, such could, a could do that. better way for you to do that. I, I I like watching some of these. I like watching, like, when my son will say, do you think I can say that? I'm like, you could say whatever the fuck you want, dude, as long as it's funny. This is our job. Like, it's not... I, as long as there's nothing malicious behind it. As long as there's... there's it's like, intent, dude. Yeah. It's intent. Yeah, it comes down to, like, whatever. I, this is... This has been talked about. Yeah. Uh, where, where are you going to be on, on, on tour here? Look at me. Just feeling it. Feeling coming up on an hour. I'm all over the place, man. I I, I just want to tell I like you. I you said that. I'm all over the place, man. I, <laughs> fucking, I got a bad feeling about this tour, man. <laughs> I'm all over the place. For me, dude, I just want to... This special was something that I was told, told not to shoot the way I shot it. I was told not to... They were like... I had a bunch of people in my corner like... This, the story you tell me this whole special is just four stories. It's just four long stories, and I'm like, yeah, this is how I. And they were like, nobody wants to watch four long stories. I shot it, dude. And that is based on what? Th- be what they think people want to watch. Well, that's Short how attention suits. Span. That's how suits yeah. burn shit out. They go, that works. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing yeah. that. Keep doing that. Don't have it evolve. No, no evolution of this. And then when it fails, they blame the art form. Like it's only a matter of time. Before they're going to be like, oh, the stand-up special is dead. The stand-up special is dead. It's like, well, maybe don't put out fucking sixty a thousand a year. A year. Yeah, yeah, maybe don't do that. I, this maybe special, be a little fucking discerning on what, you, what you're doing here. Change it up, man. Like every, I didn't change do, it up, man. Change it. <laughs> <laughs> is that freedom rock? Turn it up. I yeah, made yeah. that reference the other day, and I was like, oh, nobody gets nobody that. Nobody gets it. That's, That's one of my 80s. favorite late night commercials of fantastic. all time. Is that freedom rock? Turn, Turn it, it up, up, man. I shot this special, not glossy floor, not huge theater. I kept it close the whole time because I was like, I want full pe- frontal, full frontal, dick out, dick out. But I wanted people but not aggressive. You, you weren't erect. No, there was Flaccid. a smiley face. Flash. I went, I smiley face. <laughs> I put the Mar- Groucho Marx glasses like on. It. Yeah, I like it. Uh, but I can't, I wanted it. To, so you watched it. So you felt like you were at the show. I, no wide shots. No shot of the audience. And, and I shot, yo, this, 
I kept something. Wait, you in actually there. made it look good? I tried to. <laughs> yeah, I tried to. You actually approached it as a piece of art. Yeah, oh my I, God. I, I wow. tried to. And no one wants to see that. <laughs> my, I had somebody say to me, "Dude, I kept a part in where I had to keep some, kick somebody out." And I kept the whole thing yeah, in. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I, I had to stop the show down for five minutes. And then I said to the crowd, we're going to see if this joke is funny after I stopped it for five minutes. Yeah. And I had to win them back. And I had people saying, like, take that out. Use the first set. I'm like, no, this is what we have to do every weekend oh, don't get it. as they a don't comic. Get it. They don't get it. They don't, they don't get it the way I, I would never know how to run a network. No. And I would never sit there. You know what you should do? Well, actually, yeah. I did that. I did say don't put out fifty million a year. Whatever. What are we gonna do? So they can see your special. Four, Four stories. Comedy dot com. Dot comedy. Dot, dot, dot com. com yeah. I'm the worst. And where where? Let's get some dates here. Um, this is gonna come out on Thursday. This oh, Thursday. So what do you got? I'm in Bozeman tonight. I'm in Salt Lake City Friday and Saturday, and I'm in Boise on Sunday. And the week Jesus. after that, I'm in that's, Denver. That's the Three whitest fucking places. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. White with a with a Y. White. It's like white. I thought that was the South. Genuine oh. white what? gold. Although I think the whitest place in America is Indiana. Indiana's like not Indianapolis. No, Indiana. Indi outside Indiana's like yeah. white white. Um, but I those the Utah and Boise and Bozeman definitely some whites there. I know, but they're fun. Yeah, because you go there and you make fun of how white it is, and they're like, yeah, you know. And I don't know. I don't know what we got to do here. We kind of, kind of the villain. We got to, we got to get some more groovy yeah. stuff to attract some non-whites out here. It's just sort of us, just fucking. But uh, it is what I do like about out there. It's gorgeous, and then I like the lack of traffic and stuff like amazing. that. But then there's always something you got. Then there's like, like nothing to do. You know, but Montana, so you get a gun, you start shooting and shit. I mean, that's, that's there. they're not gun people. They just don't have. They're bored. Yeah, the Stones don't go to fucking Bozeman. No, I bet you they don't, and I bet you they you pick too, one of the Dakotas. As much as they try to save the world, they don't go to all of the world. They don't go there. They're not going to Casper, Wyoming. Yeah, no, they're not. No, there's a couple of places. Do you go to Casper, Wyoming? Is that the capital? No idea. Ooh, the capital of Wyoming. I, I went. I went Cheyenne. I did Cheyenne go. one time. And it didn't go well. It was sort of, it was sort of uh, I don't know if I was talking too fast. And I was selling tickets at that point. I, I did all right. But I remember uh, there was so little to do. Yeah. The one bar in town yeah. was the Meathead Bar, the Gay Bar, and the Military Bar. Like the, and the Which one did you go to? The, no, it was all the same place. Oh. There was just one place to go. And then they had a drive through um, liquor store with like a peep show in the back. There was like dancers in the. It was fucking wild. That's a crazy combination. Yeah, and then I ordered two eggs over easy, dude, and they were almost see through when the guy dropped. I don't know if it was a new guy on the grill. I did the gig with Dean Del Rey. He goes, dude, you can't eat those. I'm like, I'm starving. We're going to the fucking airport, dude. I'm talking like, like you know that solution you drop your fucking contacts in. Yeah, That's, it was like that with a yolk. We. When I, I got married in, in uh, New Orleans, and we had been in New Orleans for like four days, and I hadn't seen a vegetable. So I was, I told, we went to a I restaurant. I did a movie there for a whole summer, and I didn't see a vegetable. Dude, with Mike Binder? Yeah. We talked about it on his podcast two days no ago. There was no vegetables. I literally had to, I had to get in an Uber, and I had to fucking go over a bridge to get out of New Orleans to buy a juicer, there, and then Monday... The fucking vegetables would come in, and it was like buying concert tickets back in the day. If you didn't get there by noon, it was gone. Yeah. The place I went to had a broccoli casserole, and I said to him, I go, what is that? And they were like, it's got cheese and these fried onions. I go, okay, okay. I just want, can I just get the broccoli? I go, actually, don't even cook it. Just bring it out raw. And the, and the server said, you know that's going to be crunchy, right? And I was like, yeah, I know what raw broccoli is like. You know the nutrients are still going to be in it. <laughs> yeah, you know you know it's still good for you when it's crunchy. When it's crunchy. Remember one, one weekend, me and Verzi went down there. <laughs> and uh, uh, Friday night, we did a show. Saturday night, we went to LSU, Alabama. Sunday, we just hung out, ate and drank. And then on Monday night, we went to the Saints-Eagles at the Superdome. And Before I had kids, obviously. And, dude, I, I think the heartburn kicked in Friday night. Ugh. And, and I kept trying to eat something healthy to make it go back down again. And then I couldn't. And then I would start drinking beer. Dude, I'm telling you, like, it was acid reflux, like, up to fucking here. Um, like, 
it, it's I, I don't understand that city. No. I get it, but it's one of those things when, when you get there, like you, you need to have an immunity drink and all of that and stay, 36 away, hours. And stay away from Bourbon Street. 36 hours max. Stay away from Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street is one of the grossest places. It, it's, it's frightening, but the street just south of it or whatever towards the water fantastic that's where we got married on that street fantastic yeah they got that antique gun store there amazing it's unreal they have like a gun from the war of 1812 even with the bayonet it's it's I, and a finger still in there and a finger still yeah, in yeah. there you know blood on the uh, some yeah. british guy's blood on the <laughs> other end of it um all of that and like these great places to get like those don't beignets what do they call yeah, them beignets. Yeah, beignets. Cafe Dumont. yes yes and the car all of that is fantastic but the genius of New Orleans is they stick all of their fucking tourists because everyone blames New Orleans. It is New Orleans. It's the fucking tourist. Yeah, of course. Dude, I, I've told this story before. I, I went there when I was doing the movie and my wife came to town and I had a day off. It's still when I drank. So I had a few in me and there was we were, in, we were on this bar in, on Bourbon Street. It was like noon. Sun's out and everything. Summertime. It's hot. So the band was playing like Dixieland, whatever the fuck they were playing. So I start dancing with my wife and she thought it was adorable, right? And everything. We're having a great time. And then we sit down and she's just feeling like, you know, I romanced her a little bit. Yeah. You know, I added a little, you know, little, uh, little, little sugar into the relationship. A little there. Billy Two Shoes. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. And she was having a great time. And then we looked across the street. <laughs> this fucking woman, just as we used to say, blowing chow, just puking like, <laughs> like, like she was. Coney Island hot doggy. I don't know what the fuck she drank. And she was like, wah! And she like puked. And then her friends were trying to help her. And then somehow she slipped and fell in her oh, own no. puke. Ass first, sat down. And then she reached up with her puke hand. No. Oh, I get like... T- and the guy grabbed her and he was hammered. And then he... P- no. <laughs> pulled it down in it. <laughs> and my wife was doing that. And I was fucking crying laughing. It was like a, that Monty Python skit. Give me another bucket. I'm going to throw up. And, dude, it was like 1230 in the afternoon. Yeah, there are no quitters Animals. down there. There's Animals. no quitters oh, down there. God, I almost gagged telling that fucking story. There All was right. a woman at one of my shows at the Mohegan Sun. At least you think so. You never know now. She, well, <laughs> I think so. She was right up front. She had she one of those. get back from Istanbul? You have no idea. Feels like it. Yeah. She had one of those. Istanbul, is that where it's happening? That's where everybody goes. Everybody goes for every, hair plugs, get their teeth done. For some reason, I don't know. The, like, they're, they're, Are you going to Istanbul for medical? I got to be honest with you. Somebody, uh, I was on Instagram and there was like a fucking. Uh, what the fuck There was here. this video of this guy got his hair done over there. Joey Fatone went there to get his hair done. Well, I got this guy. He showed it like three months afterwards. I said, dude, that looks like it's from the fucking 90s. That does not look. It didn't look good. It, did it, you it ever didn't. play? Did you ever play um, Sanford and Sons in Kansas City with Gla- with uh, Stanford? Stanford and Sons. Oh yeah. Did you play that with Glazer and t- that dude who sometimes he wore his wig backwards and shit? Did, remember that guy who ran that club? When I was there, one of them was in jail. Yes. And the other guy, and then I, then we came through with the rich bitch. So those guys were like sinister. They were, but his wig was always different depending on what time of the day. Are they still alive or no? No, he passed away like three years ago they're both dead right all three of them are dead okay the dad's yeah, those the only guys one still were lunatics. yeah they were <laughs> they were such insane. fucking lunatic gangsters drug dealers that i i but that's know, old school I, I comedy always, club owner uh, to be dealing drugs too i don't know about that Can old I, school was you had a mob connection if you wanted drugs they could they could get you i missed that starting in the early 90s but there was another guy who's still around and he had like everybody makes fun of his wig and i had no idea it was a fucking wig what and now I dude? look. And now I look at it. Uh, I'm not gonna say the name. I'm a fucking you know, as a bald guy, I can't yeah. be fucking out in people. What about that dude who used to run that club in Arizona, Dan Dan Murr? Dan, Dan Murr, yeah, he's Dan. gone. He passed away. A lunatic. All right, that that wasn't a wig though. No, that wasn't a wig. Okay, he was just a fucking lunatic. Yeah. But that old school comedy club owner was a different breed. They're not around dude, that today. Was, the Improv in Tempe, Arizona. David Spade shot a special there and I just saw that black and white tile and all of that and I was just like that to to me like all the kids now want to want to play arenas because it's so blown up when I was coming up like that was like oh my god I can't believe I will I will I ever play there and the first time I played there I opened for David Tell and I remember he was selling the place out and I was like I was already in awe of Dave but seeing that he sold that place out and that he went up there 
and not only didn't change his act, like, okay, I'm in Tempe. I'm not at the cellar doing the 12 o'clock spot. Like, he went even harder. And um, one of my favorite things about that weekend was there was a lot of people that were brought to the show not knowing who he was, like, discovering who he was. And, yeah. And people just like that. And then by the end, the amount of people he had, like, leaning over, just dying laughing. If you took the money out of it, what's your favorite size place to play? Well, probably like a 1500 seater. But like, what's funny is those things are the money. Like, you'll make more money. Like, what people don't understand, okay, you play those big, you, you play Madison Square Garden, you play Fenway Park, you have to rent it. Uh, you don't just show up and they're yeah. like, all right, hey, and, and all the money lands yeah. on you. Yeah. No, dude, it's just chomp, 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 chomp. Like, I made, I made more money, you know, doing like two shows across the street in uh in newark at i forget the name of the theater then i made doing doing uh madison really? square garden i made more money doing four shows at a theater in arizona than i did doing fenway park dude you have to pay like they're, they're fucking the overhead that's why when you go to see these big bands and they're playing in these big places that's an, uh, one of the reasons why it's so much fucking money because they're paying to rent a fucking baseball stadium every night and they got to pay all their crew they got to pay all that. That's one thing yeah, cable guy used to say. Fire and fucking yeah. shits flipping around. Yeah, it's it's nuts. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. So, but if you just go like lean and mean, right? And you do if you can do a theater, if you can do two shows in one night because you only pay to rent it for one night, that's then you can make some fucking money. Oh, and because and it's a better experience for like fans. I think so. I think comedy. Although I will I will say the way that they have it down now with the sound and like. You know the the screens like they all feel like comedy clubs to me. But like, I remember uh, like when I saw the Stones and the Who at Sullivan Stadium yeah. back in the day. I mean, Daltrey and Pete Townsend were like this big. Like, and now you would you can see them. So it's like you get to listen in the band, like the sound. You know, the the mix and everything is um, is incredible. Like I saw Billy Joel and Stevie Nicks at SoFi Stadium. It was fucking amazing. When did you see that? When was that? Uh, last year. How is Billy Joel now? He's fucking unbelievable, dude. The guy comes out and he, he he's dressed like he forgot he had a family event. You know, he's just wearing this and then he throws like a blue sport coat on. And, he, you know, he's got like his sleeve showing, like not even a long sleeve underneath. And he comes out. He's just been doing it so fucking long. I remember he comes out and he, it's just everything's a number one hit. It's two hours of hits, right? Yeah. It's like when I saw Elton John in Vegas. It was just no opener. I'm just going to play three hours of number one hits. This is what he does. So That's I was like, crazy. I got to see both of these guys. So he goes out. He does like four or five songs. And that place is like 60,000 people, even if you don't have the field. So he has the field too. And he just sort of leaned, you know, after four or five in everybody's chair and he just goes, it's a big fucking place. Yeah. I mean, that's how chill he was. That's how chill he was in his band. They, they, Stevie Nicks, all, they, were, they were fucking amazing. They've been playing places that big. This is what I'm saying. For, for almost 50 years, dude. In the so, history of tickets, I bet you this, well, who knows, maybe the dead. I wonder if the dead has sold more tickets than the Stones. Well, they kind of never got off the road, did right. they? The, and, it, they, and they probably played way more shows than the Stones. But I, I wonder if the dead have sold the most tickets in the history. All right, dude, I want people to watch your special. Sorry. You're just going way, way down. Like, sorry, sorry. I wonder if the... the uh, I, I, I do love... I, but I do, do you love... think Tony Orlando <laughs> sold more tickets yeah, than... But, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to... Captain and Tennille? Captain and Tennille, I don't think, sold a whole lot of tickets. I loved Captain Teal, and I saw Tony Orlando open for fucking you Don, Don Rickles. Don't tell me you love Captain and Tennille. Oh, yeah. That is not... Well, I had a crush on her and her fucking Dorothy Hamill haircut. <laughs> All right, that's it. All right, we got to wrap this yeah. up. Um, the for... great Josh Wolf, Dude, I'm so psyched. Thanks, man. Finally got this Thanks guy. for having One me. One of my favorite people in the business. He's a Boston guy via fucking Seattle. What's up? Fourstoriescomedy.com. Check it out. Uh, he's doing something different. He actually gave a shit. He shot the thing beautifully. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of you, buddy. Thanks, Happy dude. For you. Appreciate you very All right. Much. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great weekend, you cunts. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, October 10th, 2016. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Fall on the fucking ball. That's what. I, who else yelled that near Knoxville, Tennessee, when that running back fumbled the ball and your quarterback is trying to, God bless him, is trying to pick the ball up. Why won't they fall on the fucking ball? 
Everybody's just like, oh, I can pick it up and then run with it. Just fall on the fucking thing. It's, not, it's the shape of the fucking ball, too. Even if you fall on it, it somehow fucking squirts out. Oh, you die a thousand deaths. There's three, I was, there's three things that have probably brought me closer as far as sports goes. Just generally speaking, week after week, like a bad cigarette or drinking fucking problem, right? The three fucking plays that get me, I don't know what gets you. I don't pretend to know who you are, and I would never speak for you. However, I am willing to share <laughs> with you. Oh, what the fuck did I just do? There it is. Sorry. I swear to God, I can't get this fucking thing to do anything, but if I brush up against the, anything, it, the whole fucking screen disappears. You know, like people who suck at playing video games, you know what I mean? If you're playing like one of those fight games, the other guy's kicking your ass, you just start fucking hitting a million of them. And all of a sudden, like these, these clouds start forming around your guy and he does a little fucking, I don't know, spinning back fist with his foot, whatever the fuck that's called. Right. Um, that's what happens to me with computers. And that, I, then I, you never know how you just did it. Everybody was like, oh shit, what the fuck is that? I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> so anyways, the three things. How's this for controlling my ADD? I'm going to stick with this here. The three, going to get back to it. The three fucking things that just make me die a thousand death is, deaths, plural, yes, is, because um, 1,000 is more than one, stay on target, Bill. Stay focused. Is not falling on a fumble. Dropping, you know, catching a fucking ball, running to the end zone, returning a punt, returning a kickoff, running with the fucking, running backs rarely do this. It's always fucking receivers and people who return kicks. I think they're called kick returners. For whatever fucking reasons, reason, I don't understand why these motherfuckers, they get to right to the goal line and then they, boop, they just drop it right on the half yard line as if they bet the under. That kills me. Like how many, like you would think like the first time you saw somebody do that, you'd be like, oh my God, I'm never fucking, that's not going to be me. I'm going to run to the back of the fucking end zone. Then I'll fucking spike it. I'll drop it. I'll do my little fucking moonwalk, whatever the fuck it is. All right. The freckled Fandango, whatever my end zone <laughs> dance would be called. I don't even know what Fandango means. I just know it's an old Kevin Costa movie. Um, that and then finally, my favorite in yours, the prevent defense. The fucking pre- we'll give away the middle and uh, we'll give them a fucking thirty yard cushion and rather than them scoring on us on one play they'll score in five plays but the amount of clock that they're going to eat up versus the points that they're going to score is slowly going to kill everybody in our fucking fan base you know what I mean it's really hard to tell Ugh, fucking voice it's really hard to tell <clears throat> that I'm not through puberty yet it's really hard to tell like truly who is a great quarterback in the final two minutes of the game ever since the prevent defense because I, I think back in the day I mean I know that they didn't want you to get behind him they must have done some early version of it but there was like a few guys that would go down the field you know your Roger Starbucks your, your Terry Bradshaw's Kent Stabler you know but everybody else I mean there was like three or four guys that could do it and now it's just everybody in the league because they, they're just gonna they, I, I swear to you you could put you could put I'm going to go a little Mike and Mike here. I'll tell you right now, you could put me on the center during the prevent defense. I, I could definitely, I could complete a fucking pass as long as they didn't know that it was me. That that was not a professional quarterback, that this is actually a podcaster slash comedian slash uh, crafter of shit jokes. You know, then of course they just play defense. You know, they blitz or whatever the fuck they would do. But if, if they gave me the respect of an NFL quarterback. I, I, could, I could dump it off. That shouldn't happen on any fucking level. So whatever. I was watching that, um, the Tennessee-Texas uh, A&M game. What a fucking game. You know, I want to say that Tennessee shot themselves in the foot with their 58 fucking turnovers, but you got to give it up to Texas. I mean, they just kept making them happen. You know? I mean, I, I want to think that somebody on the coaching staff or the volunteers said, hey, guys, Let's say we protect the football. Let's say the next time we gain 80 yards on one fucking play on this team, we tuck the thing away. You know, put two hands on the fucking ball. Um, I know that they were saying that. Yet the, the turnovers just kept coming. You know, it was just, I don't know. It was fucking an amazing game. And um, I have to tell you, coming from a professional sports city, 
You know, the safe suburbs, as I always say, ever since Goodwill Hunting, everybody thinks you grew up in Southie, you stole cars, you're good at math, and you like apples. That's not me. That's not the guy I am. I grew up in the safe suburbs. There was street hockey. There, there, was, uh, there was Little League baseball. We had a great place to get ice cream, you know. Not saying that there weren't fucking maniacs, you know, that later got into fight and accidentally bit people's ears off. Because they were biting on the air and the guy would go to push him away and then part of the air would come off. I'm not saying that people like that did not come from my town. I'm just saying, more so than not, people did not bite other people's ears off. Now, you're getting towards the, uh, you know, downtown area, like, the, you know, who knows what the fuck would happen. All right? That's all I'm saying. Anyways, let me get back to this shit. So, uh, coming from a, uh, the safe suburbs of a, a, of a major fucking city that's a professional sports city... Um, I, I can't believe that I haven't watched college football. Like I've been watching it since 2007. So I'm almost a decade in, but the years that I lost, it's a fucking travesty. I'd watch it a little bit, but I, I have to be honest with you. If you watch sec football, if you watch the Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, if you just watch that game every week, okay. Which is usually a fucking sec game. You watch an sec football game. I'm telling you the NFL it, in, in this Time, this particular time, cannot fuck with those games. They're unbelievable. They're just fucking, even, the, even that uh, last week, that was an ACC game. The Clemson-Louisville game was fucking crazy. I mean, it kind of helps this year. Somebody was bringing it up that everybody seems to be scoring 30 and 40 points. Speaking of which, what the fuck happened to the Oregon Ducks? Did like the whole school, did the whole team from last year just say, yeah, we all want to be eligible for the draft? I don't know what happened to him. What's going on with you, Cleo? You're all fucking itchy. All right, just lay down, buddy. Lay down. You don't know how to come up on the couch. You don't. Your idea, you can't just have your part of the couch. You come up here and then you just, you fucking, you know, you're all over me. I understand it. I like it, but I got a podcast too. So go lay down, buddy. Go lay down, buddy. Go on. There you go. Um. Anyway, so... I ended up um, watching the Tennessee game um, at home in Los Angeles. Now, some of you, if you listen to this podcast, you're like, well, wait a minute, Bill. How the fuck were you at home on Saturday? Say, As they say in the Boston area, why don't you come over on uh, fucking Saturday? There's one little consonant in there. It's Saturday. Come over. Come on over on Saturday. Um... He was supposed to be down in the swamp at the Florida LSU game. That fucking stadium. I've wanted to go there since Emmett Smith played there. I always loved the colors, the blue with the orange helmet. Emmett Smith was the shit. It just, I just, I've wanted to go there for fucking ever. They've, they've always had great teams. Florida football has always been, it's just my whole, probably since my teens when uh, Jimmy Johnson, how about them Cowboys came into fucking, University in Miami. Then you had the other guy there at Florida State, Billy Bowden, whatever the fuck his name was, who couldn't. His field goal kickers were always wide left and wide right. You know, um, I've been wanting to go to that stadium forever, but of course the uh, the hurricane came in, and um, you know, one of my buddies was saying, you know, early in that week, like like we get so fucking crazy excited because that that's like you got and you got to have this as 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 a guy when you get older. You have to have that thing that you do, the guy's weekend thing. As fucking corny as they try to make it sound, as much as it sounds like a fucking beer commercial, like those are the things. And women should have them too. Whatever it is that they want to fucking go do. I know it involves wine, their own way of getting fucked up and everything, and they like you know, food and all that shit. Um, I like to stand out in a parking lot in the elements. <laughs> Eating stuff that I don't really know uh, what they put in it, like hot dogs and that type of shit. So anyways, we're getting so excited to go to this fucking game. Uh, my buddy got the tickets. Somebody else handled the, uh, the, the fucking car service to get over there. And uh, I went out and I got, the, uh, I got the cigars. All right, I came in there loaded for beer. I got a hookup. I'm not going to say who, whatever, whatever. I had some fucking sticks. All right, I, I had some fucking... Just picture every fucking brand of Cuban cigar that you know. Cohibas, Partagas, Partagas, however the fuck you say it, tomato, tomato. I had Monte Cristos. I just, I had some fucking 
tremendous sticks. And I, I brought it up. There was five of us. I, was, I brought 15 Cuban cigars, right? We could each smoke one every fucking night. And each one was going to get progressively more insane. Start with the mild one Thursday, go a little medium. And then the fucking, you know, we just, I don't know. We just fucking won a world war. That's the one you got to smoke on the game, on day game, right? So the beginning of the week, we're all fucking amped up. We're texting each other and everything. And then my buddy who lives on the East Coast, because everybody out on the West Coast, we don't pay attention to the East Coast. You, you fucking get up three hours before we do. By the time we have a cup of coffee, the day's half over. There's no, there's no point of even reading the newspaper. Everything has already progressed like another 12 hours. So I didn't pay attention. My buddy texts me. He goes, uh, there would have to be a fucking hurricane this weekend. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, right? And the game plan was we were flying into Atlanta. And like assholes, I, we booked our... Atlanta, we were doing a gig, and then we were going to Gainesville to do the show. But like assholes, we didn't book hotels until the last second. And already 100,000 people coming in to see the fucking game. There was no hotels. So guess where we got our hotels? Take a wild guess what Florida city we got our hotel rooms. Jacksonville, Florida. That's where we were going to go. So we were going to fly down from Atlanta and then pick up a rental car, drive over to Gainesville, do the gig Friday night, drive back, drop off the rental car, go back to the hotel, smoke another stick, fucking jump in the car service, go over there and see fucking a legendary football program in the greatest conference that's out right now, the SEC, right? So... I hear the hurricane's coming, so I go, all right, you know what? They're probably going to cancel a bunch of flights. Fuck this. So I get a rental car. I get a rental car. Oh, Cleo, please don't puke on the rug. Do you need to go outside, buddy? What are you doing? Huh? Was that just you or was that me? <laughs> that was you. You okay? Don't step in the recorder. Cleo. God damn it. Just sit down, dude. Just sit down. Just sit down, please. Can you please sit down? Sorry, guys. Anybody else's dog eat grass, even if they're not feeling well? Even if they're feeling well, they just fucking eat grass. Why do you do that, Cleo? Huh? Sometimes you just talk to them, they get so focused on you, and they put their ears up. No, no, go lay down, go lay down. Do you need to go upstairs? You want to go see mommy? All right, hang on a second. Hang on a second. All right, come here. Come here. Come on, go see mommy. Go on. Oh, that was a great move. Oh, fuck, she didn't puke. Puked up something. All right. There goes that sock. There goes that sock. All right. Anyway, so that was the game plan. So I was like, all right, so, you know, they're, they're going to be overly cautious. They're going to cancel the fucking flights and blah, 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 blah. So we'll just fucking drive down. Well, everybody's leaving the hurricane. We're going to fucking drive down the 75 South. Well, so we fucking land, and uh, they're supposed to make a decision Thursday at 1 o'clock, and they don't make a decision. So me and Bartnick are in the fucking, are in the lobby, and we're excited that they didn't make a decision. We're like, yeah, dude, come on, man. This is fucking, this is the South. They're playing this fucking game. They're playing the game. They don't, they don't want to cancel this fucking game and have to fucking re- refund 100,000 tickets or try to figure out when to reschedule it. They're fucking playing it. And we got excited, and we had hope, and then the whole fucking thing it, it, you know, it went up to a category four and it all fucking went to, went to shit. But I got to tell you, actually, if I was even trying to drive down to the South, like they evacuated so many people smartly, by the way, I mean, only three people died in a category four, Well, you know, down in Haiti, like, you know, a couple hundred, they said even more died. Uh, granted we're first world, we have better structures and that type of shit. But you know, back in the day, I mean, that, that would have been us. Like, I was thinking about that back in the day, like, you know, when you didn't know a hurricane was coming. I mean, you saw, like, signs, but, like, by then you only had, like, six hours to try to get the fuck out of there. What am I trying to say? Long story short is even if we tried to drive south, they just completely closed off the southbound 75 at some point, And it was just, like, all of Florida driving up. So it didn't work out. So then we were like, okay, how do we save this weekend? Because my buddy... The one who told us about the fucking hurricane, he had not even left yet. 
So he's at home with his wife and his kids. He's a total family man. And once a year, he goes out, you know, has some beer, smokes a stick. It's just, you know, and he goes, this is the one weekend where his kids didn't have any sports. All right. We got to make it happen for this guy. So we start looking around. Where the fuck can we go? The Georgia Bulldogs home? No, they're in South Carolina. South Carolina is three and a half hours away. Let's fucking drive to that one. And then we find out it got fucking moved to Sunday. Fuck, can't go to that game. What else do we got? UNC. I just went to UNC. I don't want to watch them play Notre Dame. Notre Dame stinks. Or is that NC State? NC State was playing them. I was like, look, dude, I'm not driving into the fucking Carolinas. The goddamn, the fucking storm is coming up that way. All right, what about Tennessee? Let's go to the Volunteers. Fuck it. We'll do it live, right? Let's go to where we're all fucking we're in a panic. Who's Tennessee playing? Texas A&M. The Aggies. Great fucking game. Where are they playing? College Station. Fuck. All right. Who's next? Who's next? Alabama. Alabama. The dream ends tonight. Where are they playing? Who are they playing? Where are they? They're playing Arkansas. Where are they playing? In Arkansas. Fuck. All right. Uh, Auburn. Auburn. War Eagle. War Eagle. Who do they got? Who do they got? Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Where are they playing? Auburn. Mississippi State. Shut up. All right. It was just fucking the three of us standing at this fucking over this sports page trying to salvage this fucking weekend looking everybody was away the only way to get to any of the games that we wanted to go to that weren't in the path of the fucking hurricane was that we were gonna have to fucking you know we were like clemson what about clemson they're playing bc ah they're gonna kill them where they playing boston college shit right over and over and over right so the only way we're gonna get to them is if we fucking uh you know, I don't know if we jumped on a plane and I was already not working the next night. So we're just going to hang in Atlanta and then jump on a plane. It just, it got to be too fucking crazy. But for half a second, we did consider, um, we did consider the, the, uh, Alabama Arkansas game, but, uh, so it didn't end up happening, but, um, you know, what do you, what the fuck are you going to do? It was still, it was still great to, you know, it was cool when I got home, I got to chill with my wife and I got to watch all those great games and um, I didn't have to be in the path of a fucking hurricane. I wasn't another asshole that the poor fire department had to try to fucking rescue because I didn't listen to their warnings. You know what I mean? And uh, so anyways, um, Jesus Christ, that storm is fucking nasty, man. My condolences to anybody down in the Jacksonville area. You know, I hope you made it out all right as far as, I mean, pretty much people made it out, but I hope your stuff is all right, because God knows those fucking insurance companies, you know, they just, oh, oh that, yeah, we don't cover that. You ever see that sh- that one that Spike Lee made about New Orleans, where they're like, they just were looking at the water line. We'll cover anything below the water line. They're like, anything above it, <laughs> it's your fault. It's just like, you motherfuckers, man. Like, like what, what, what kind of people are you, you know? I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Can you tell I'm also typing in my password here? So anyways, oh, I got, I got some more iPhone stories for you. I got time for a quick iPhone story. So I got the iPhone 7 now, all right? And uh, I want to thank everybody who tried to help me out with even the condescending ones or this new generation people who are saying they were cringing. Me and my, my boy, I had to tweet, my boyfriend works at the Apple store, uh, or and I work at the Apple store too, and we were both cringing as we were listening to you talk about, like, why, why are you cr- you're cringing for, I wouldn't cringe for you, like, if I watched you two geniuses try to change a fucking tire or drive a stick shift, as they say you millennials can't do, if that's the truth, I wouldn't cringe, I'd try to teach you how to do it. Cringing. I felt so bad. I was so awkward. I, I really think this whole generation, the reason why they're always using that, that term awkward is because they were so sheltered that I don't think that they kind of work shit out amongst themselves as kids the way we did. Now, granted, my generation was too far the other way. They didn't know what the fuck we were doing. And I think with millennials, there was an overcorrection. I think this next generation, they're going to get it right. It's like, you know, you can't have them fucking joining, you know, either those groups where there's all these pedophiles. You know, you know what they are. I am not going to say I'm one rhymes with with the uh the rubs louts. <laughs> <laughs> the rub shouts. Um you also don't want to when they're very young, it's probably not good to have them take a uh a ha. Uh I can't even say it right. 
a Harati class. Um, you know, shit like that. The, the kinds of places. And then you can just say church groups. Church groups are another big one. You just, you just can't have them fucking, you know. But you have to let them play outside. You got to let them solve shit, you know, interact with each other and shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think we went too far the other fucking direction. And I can say that having never had a child. <laughs> so anyways, um, somebody told me that, you know, when I, when I sat there and I counted all my contacts, I didn't realize, and this is all shit that you guys can laugh at me about, but I know there's a lot of you, especially in my generation, do not know this. If you scroll down to the end of your contacts, it'll tell you how many you have. Um, I was off by one. I said 113. I had 114. Who knew? Who the fuck knew? Um, I mean, by the way, if you didn't use the cloud, uh, getting all your contacts back, not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's just as you need the person's number, you're like, fuck, I don't have the number. Who do I know that knows him? You just, you know, by then you have that person's number and you, you gradually put it all back together again. It's so it, it wasn't as bad as I thought. And then somebody gave me a great s- suggestion saying, well, there's there's uh, these places you can go to that they they can uh, retrieve lost uh, data or whatever the fuck, whatever the computer term is that. So I might try that with my phone. I have not turned it on since then. I'm going to try sometime like Tuesday morning. Hopefully I can turn it on and grab a couple. Um, <clears throat> is, you know, the guy who used to work on my truck, he moved to Arizona and uh, he recommended this great place here in California to tune it up and all that type of shit. And I lost his fucking number. And because he's a crazy car guy, like his website still has like a fucking California number. So I should probably just give it a try. But anyways, let's, so anyways, so I had to get the iPhone 7 because I, I fucked up my phone. I got it all wet and shit. And um, so now this one's waterproof. So they had this little fucking umbilical cord off of it. And I was sitting there going, there's no fucking way I'm not going to lose this thing. I have to be on my best behavior with this. So I was literally carrying that little cord around in the iPhone box with me while I was on the road because I was too paranoid to even leave it into the phone because I was afraid I'd go to put it in my pocket, it'd pop out, I wouldn't know, I don't know what. So um, I somehow make it across this country and back, I still have it. Um, I went back to my house to use my gym, you know, I said finishing up the fucking kitchen, you know, Um, and I had it there. And I went to grab a few things and I don't know, I got back to the place that I'm renting and it was just gone. It was gone and I started to have a meltdown and I was just like, this drives your wife nuts. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. And I tore apart everything, couldn't find it in the house. I drove back to my place. I couldn't find it there. And I just said, fuck this. And I drove over to the Apple store and somewhere over there, I just got into this fucking Zen place. I was like, dude. This is 100% your fault. It's not Steve Jobs' fault. It's your fault. You should have just left the fucking thing in your phone. I'm sure you can pick up the phone and fucking shake it. And I'm sure nothing, you know, I'm sure it probably doesn't even come out. Because they probably already knew that that was going to be a fucking concern. So I drive over there. You know, I pull in. I, I just said, fuck it. I valet my old Prius. Dirty as shit right now because I still have to get the dents taken off when that fucking road rage cunt slammed into the person, two people behind me. Um, so I just got that thing. It's got dents. I'm going to get pulled out while I get it washed. So it's, it's really looking bad. So I pull in and the valet place at the mall, they go like, yeah, what's, what's your phone number? And I'm just like, yeah, none of your business. I go, I don't give out my phone number. That's what I used to say. Now I just go, I don't have a phone because they're just going to call you. And it's just, they're just all of those things, by the way. All of those phone numbers and all of that shit, I'm telling you, it all gets bundled and it gets, it gets sold. There was a lobby. There was something, a lobby? There was some, something going on in Washington where they, with what, they were saying what I was saying much more intelligently and written down on paper, saying that you ought to get a piece of it. If somebody's going to sell your information. Shouldn't you get a cut, right? 10% something. I'm sure that got shot down. But anyways, uh, so I just pull up and I just say, yeah, I don't have a cell phone. So then they just take your name down and there's always ways to get around it. You just say, yeah, no, I can't do that. Right. So I go into the, the Apple store and I walk up to one of the geniuses and I said, yeah, hey, I need the little fucking umbilical cord. And they said that right there over the, over there on the wall. And I just walked up and I grabbed five of them. Okay. I grabbed five of them and I grabbed this other cord where it was, for, you know, where you can plug it into your phone and someone else can also plug their headphones in while you plug your headphones in. 
and you can both listen to the same song. Now, I did that because whenever I'm on a plane, he's always like, listen to this song. Isn't this a great song? And I was just like, I'll get that one for her, right? So I walk up to one of the dudes with the fucking iPad, and I just say, yeah, hey, I want to I wanna fucking I wanna buy these, right? So they're all looking at me like, what the fuck, right? Why do you have so many? It was two geniuses and one of the, one of the people who was just trying to buy some shit there. And one of them finally goes to me and goes, I got to ask you, how come you're buying five of these? And I was like, uh, because I know what kind of a moron I am. And the dude was like, what? I go, everybody's a moron. So you got to include me. So you got to figure out what kind of moron you are. So uh, I'm the kind of moron that's going to lose at least four of these in a year. So I'm getting five. And they all fucking laughed. And I joked. And I somehow was able to joke my way through the whole fucking experience. I kept it light. And I, and I didn't lose my shit. Um, oh, except when I got into it with that one guy. I forgot when I was driving back, this guy came barreling up the street. And I, and I, I live on a street where it's one of those streets where it's like it should be one way, but it's two way. And he came flying up and I was rushing over. So I just had to slam on the brakes. I just kind of gestured like, really, dude? And I back up and then he pulls up alongside me. And he's big fucking Jaguar. And he goes, he goes, yes, is there a problem? I, said, I go, I go, yeah, man. I try to stay calm. I go, yeah, man. I go, you're driving too fast through the neighborhood here, blah, 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 blah. He goes, I go, and I go, you know, it's a one-way street. He goes, it isn't a one-way street. I go, yeah, but with the cars parked, you know, you know, I go, you're coming through here like 30, 40 miles an hour. He goes, this car won't go 40, which I don't even know what that means. Won't go 40 on this street. I have no idea. I was just like, dude, there's kids on this street. And then I lied. I go, dude, I have a kid. <laughs> Just trying to make my argument better. He goes, I got three kids. And he holds up the fingers, too. Like, I, I, all right. And then he, he just said something. He goes, now do you feel stupid? <laughs> That's what he said to me. He goes, now do you feel stupid? And I, so, and I wish I could go back to that moment and just say to him, like, dude, I always feel stupid. But this has nothing to do with that. Dude, you're driving like a fucking maniac. You got three kids. Yeah, I bet they don't live on this street, you cunt. And I was trying. I was trying because I've done this before with people on that street. I just speak in a, a, a slow tone. I'm just going, dude, I got kids. You know, I, 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 I just lie. And I say I got kids, plural. Just totally lie out my ass. The reality is I don't want to have a head-on collision with somebody. So, um, you know, last couple of times I did it, the, the, even like the young punk kids and shit, you know, with the fucking hats that match their fucking shoelaces, even then they feel, all right, all right, cool. All right. Sorry. You're like, yeah, cool. No problem. You know? And, uh, this guy just wasn't having it. He just goes, now do you feel stupid? And then I just, once he said that, I, ah, you know, go fuck yourself. We both dro- <laughs> I can drove away. Um, so that did happen. On the way over this. So anyway, so I go to buy all of these fucking things and I'm making fun of myself because, guys, I'm really trying not. I mean, it's funny when I do it on stage. It's not funny when I do it in real life or around the house. I'm really trying to work on my temper. So I was making fun of myself going, yeah, I'm the kind of fucking moron that's going to lose four of these in a year. So I'm buying five. So they all laugh. And the guy's like, all right. And I go, what's that going to be like seven thousand dollars? And he said, no, it was like seventy five bucks or something. These little ass fucking wires, five of them, like twenty five a whack or twenty a whack, whatever the fuck it was. But plus I had the other thing. So I go to open my wallet to take out my credit card. And what is sitting in the fold of my wallet is the fucking attachment I couldn't find. I must have put it in the same pocket. And I just left. I go, see, right here. Look at this. There it is. Now, now I got six. I'm a fucking moron. They were just all laughing. It made me feel good. Even though they were laughing at me, it just made me feel better that, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I got to be, I got to learn how to fucking do that, man, because I am, uh, I am a lot, you know, I'm funny on a podcast. I'm funny for an hour, but after that, dude, I, I can be a lot to live with. So anyways, I'm working on myself. I'm actually considering going to speak to somebody and, uh, you know, because I swear to God, like I'm, I have two things I want to do. I want to just actually sit down and maybe read some instructions on my iPhone and actually make it something that I can use and computers actually maybe learn about them rather than screaming to anyone who listen about ro- robots and being microchipped, you know. And then also I would like to to uh, if I could just have the same sense of humor I have about big shit. When big shit happens, I do not flip out. Little shit happens, like I lost a fucking little cord on my phone. I fucking lose my shit. So if I can just somehow, you know, not lose my shit in the car and the technology thing, those are my two biggest fucking goals. If I could just laugh my way through that shit, 
I would be, I'd be a much better person. I think I'd be a lot easier to deal with, you know? Um, and I'll just go after it the way I go after other shit. I've never really tried to fucking like full on try to fix my temper the way I try to lose weight, work out, play drums or whatever. By the way, dude, I am in a fucking Iron Maiden rabbit hole right now. Clive Burr, the whole fucking number of the beast album. It's just, I can't stop listening to it. That and peace of mind. Um, Nico McBrain, I am fucking, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> but anyways, let me read a little bit of uh, advertising here. Uh, speaking of which, has anybody watched uh, Luke Cage yet? I love that I brought that fucking dude up I, a long time ago on this podcast, man. That was my, one of my favorite comic books was the Spider-Man and Power Man one, where it was about the NYP uh, F fire department. Um, a buddy of mine actually uh, ordered it on eBay and got it for me, man. I hadn't seen that since like 1978 or 80 when it came out. And I watched the first episode. I liked it. They did the usual shit that they do with superheroes. Like, like you know, we just sit there like, will you fuck this chick already? Why are you letting this guy slap you in the head? They always have him do that shit before they just fucking, you know, throw somebody through a wall. I watched that. And I also watched... Um, uh, Westworld, which you want to hear something hilarious. I, I loved that movie when I was a kid. I loved Yul Brenner was huge. I mean, nobody said draw like him when he, he could draw. He did this fucking, he just had the best voice ever. Badass with the fucking shaved head and all that shit. Um, I love that movie to the point. I remember like 15 years ago, not 15, it was probably like 10 years ago. I actually called my agent and I said, Hey, how much would it cost to buy the rights to Westworld? Because they just started redoing all these things. And I'm like, there's no fucking way you could make a killer movie out of that. And, of course, they came back. It's like, it's like $9 zillion. I didn't realize it was a Michael Crichton mo- book and all that shit. So I obviously didn't have the money. And thank God I didn't have the fucking rights to it. Because I have to tell you, I watched the first episode of Westworld. They completely, 100%, took it to another fucking level, updated it. It's It's unbelievable. I actually like that pilot better than the Luke Cage one, slightly better. I thought the Luke Cage one was the shit. So now I got two new shows, bang, bang, to fucking watch. Definitely check those out. And if you want to laugh, by the way, I ran into a buddy of mine, uh, Willie Barcia, who I haven't seen in fucking forever. He's the real deal. He's a fucking hilarious comedian. And he has a stand-up special uh, that he just put out. And I wanted to give him a shout-out if you get a chance to check him out. Um, All right, let's get back to the advertising here. All right, Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Uh, Guys, you know to go to Dollar Shave Club for a fantastic shave. What you probably don't know is that they have other amazing products too. The quality is the best on the market. Their body wash is great and won't dry you out, won't dry out your skin. Their pre and post post shave stuff keeps your skin soft and smooth. Do you know that they made me a custom Dr. Cavi's Easy Shave Butter? They put the whole label on it and framed it for me. Uh, really cool fucking people at that company. Uh, Dollar Shave Club's got stuff for your hair, for your face, for your underparts, uh, for everywhere you, you need to keep feeling and looking fresh. Keep you feeling and looking fresh. I just get worse every week with these. Once you're in the club... You'll see they've got the best grooming products out there, and they're affordable. Right now, your chance to see for yourself why so many people love Dollar Shave Club. Um, If you're not a member yet and have never joined, now is the time. You'll get your first month of raises for free. Just pay shipping. That's After that, it's only a few bucks. Join today. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. And the next one is, how many more of these are there? I always try to break them up, but there's a lot. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's do three and two. All right. Three against two here. All right. Blue Apron, everybody. Not all all ingredients are created equal. This is like reverse JFK. Uh, Fresh, high-quality ingredients make a real difference. So it's important to know where your food comes from. Talk about your personal experience with Blue Apron. The meal you cooked, the ingredients overall, how it tasted, how it it felt cooking it, etc. Well, I haven't used it yet, but it sounds amazing. How about that? That's my experience. I made a potato pancake for the first time today, gave it to my wife, put a little salmon on it with some fucking, uh, what's that white shit? Sour cream and a little bit of dill on top. All right. A couple eggs over each. 
couple of eggs over each, and I gave it to her, and uh, I actually walked out of the room because then I had to make my eggs. Because how do you make four fucking eggs over easy with the standard frying pan? You can't do it. Somebody has to suffer. So I came walking in afterwards, and I tried a little potato pancake. I was like, that tastes pretty good. And you know what my wife said? She said, that was better than the one that I had at brunch. Bam! Okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, when you start making meals like that for your lady... You, the, everything else goes to the next level, all right? I wish that there was a Blue Apron when I was a kid. Uh, Christ, we had to grow our own fucking potatoes. These people are going to bring them right to your goddamn door for less than 10 bucks per meal. Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. What sucks the most when you're fucking making a meal is taking out the little fucking measuring cup and the little fucking teaspoon. Was it a teaspoon or was it a tablespoon? Fuck! They eliminate all of that. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals, so they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, family-run farms, fisheries, and ranches. Uh, Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron is bringing you the best. Customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Dude, this is a great fucking way to get in shape, too. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You're eating well. You're making the ladies fucking like you. Or the fellas, way to his heart, right, ladies? You know, not trying to be misogynistic, not saying that a woman should actually go out and maybe cook her man a meal every fucking leap year. Choose delivery options to find your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. That's the shit. Uh, check this Check this week's menu out for... Uh, uh, and get your first three meals for free with shipping, with free shipping. Go to blueapron.com slash burr. I always picture you guys squinting as you try to hear me read this. Come on, Bill, get through one sentence without stuttering. Uh, you will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com uh, slash burr. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right. And then we just got two more. I'll read those later. Um, is that my, is that is something done? Are the cookies done? What's going on here? By the way, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I weighed myself today. I'm in the buck 70s, which is perfect. Get myself. I want to be 172. I think I'm going to come in about 175, but that's fine. All right. That is going to be fine. Tipping the scales at 175. As long as I got that seven is the second number, uh, I'll be all right, you know? But I'll tell you, my walk around weight's about 210. 210 if I could eat and drink the way that I wanted to. Um, by the way, guess what came the other day? Guess what came? I ordered it back in June. My Jaguar came. I fucking picked it up today. I can't, I'd like the Catholic guilt that I fucking had that I actually went out and fucking, you know, did this, but it wore off the second I got behind the fucking thing. I came walking into the showroom, dude. I ordered the color, everything, underrated, under fucking rated, ordering a car. You just go to the website, everything that you want, you just fucking order it. It's like Blue Apron, except it's a fucking car, right? Everything is perfect. This fucking car, oh my God, it's, it's, it's fucking insane. Um, I'll post, uh, am I going to post it? I don't want to post a picture because no one has this color out here. Um, I'll be like that chick driving around in that pink cat, uh, fucking Corvette out here. But, um. Even Nia, because she's all like, you know, you know, women, dude, like when a guy gets excited about some stuff, I swear to God, it's like you're looking at another woman. They always, they always got to fucking take you down. It's kind of cute and kind of annoying, you know, but I'm mostly annoying and way less cute. So I like, you know, whatever. And uh, so I come walking in, they got the whole, they, they actually backed it into the showroom and they put a car cover over the fucking thing, Right. And they fucking did the unveiling. They took it off, dude. It, it's just fucking. It's the fucking. I don't give a shit. It's the British racing green with the black rims, black grill. I got that, that, the fucking. I had the analog gauges. I didn't get all wheel drive because I wanted the rear end to kick out a little bit. I got the rear wheel, 390 fucking horses. I'm going to take it over to Galpin to get a new exhaust system on it because right now it's very, a very refined sound. I like a little more of a growl in it. It's, it's, dude, it is the fucking shit. It's like, what if Steve McQueen drove a fucking, uh, what if Steve McQueen drove a Jaguar and had two kids? Because <laughs> it is a four-door. Let's not get crazy, Bill. Let's not get crazy. Um, 
Dude, it is. It's fucking awesome. And uh, I love it because everybody out here that has a four-door sedan either has a Mercedes, a BMW, an Audi, and then to a lesser case, a Lexus. But that's more of a younger person's car, I feel. Uh, those cars are all fucking great. And um, I, a lot of ways, like those have kind of become the muscle cars of today, of the four-door sedans, which is perfect. You can actually put somebody in it. It's like an adult person's car. Um, oh, my God. Like, I absolutely in love with this car. So um, it was fucking hilarious. And I got the price I wanted, everything. So then, of course, dude, I, I just did, I did everything right. I got these, fo- the floor mats are, uh, they're not like the carpeted ones that after a while they start wearing out and everything. I ordered these, these like these rubber fucking mats that look like the shit. They say Jaguar on them. And, and they actually, they're a little bit different color black than the, than the carpet, so they kind of pop a little bit. I mean, the car is the fucking shit. And it's going to kill me the first time somebody opens a door into it. But I always just think of the way Steve McQueen drove that car in Bullet, the way those good old boys drove that fucking uh, 69, what was it, Challenger. They fucking broke one of those every week. Fuck it. He was supposed to drive it. I remember Fast and Loud one time, they bought a Ferrari, like F40, and uh, the whole the frame had been bent and all that, and they saw it, and they were all laughing. They were just going like, you know what, dude? If you buy a car like this at some point, it should look like this. <laughs> Obviously, you shouldn't crack up your car, but they, you, they're meant to be driven. But um, I don't know. I can't believe that I have that, that nice of a car. So I want to thank Stop before I keep fucking gloating about the car. Thank you to everybody who ever came out to one of my shows um, and watched my shit and told people about it because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have that car if you didn't. So thank you. And um, I'm actually going to miss the Prius, though. I'm uh, actually selling it to a uh, to a friend of mine. So it's go, it's getting a good home. And I got to tell you, underrated, the fucking Toyota Prius. I had nine years, 85,000 miles on the fucking thing. I changed the oil. I did everything on it. It's a fucking... That thing will go for 200,000 miles easy if the next person changes the oil and, and, all, and all the lubricants and all that type of shit, just regular maintenance and all that type of stuff. But they're just fucking great cars. And you know what I also found with the Prius, dude? When people, all my friends found out that I was uh, getting a new car. I had like half a dozen people going, dude, what are you doing with the Prius? I'll buy it off you. All these comics are loving it because it has good gas mileage. They actually have a decent resale value. So the amount of shit that those cars get, man, they're, they're kind of a good investment. They're fucking cheap. They're cheap on gas. Like I know ne- the whole fucking time, every time the gas went up and went fucking crazy, I never paid more than like between 35 and 38 bucks is the most I ever paid. And the rest of the time, it was about $27 to fill the fucking tank. And uh, when it would drop really low, like when we would start producing oil and then Saudi, the Saudis would be like, oh, fuck, let's put them out of business. And then they would overproduce, you know, all the fuel and all that type of shit. And then. It would just plummet. I mean, I there was there were days I filled that car up for like eighteen or nineteen bucks. So uh, I will definitely uh, I'll definitely miss that thing. But this thing is just oh, it's just fucking. It's a beautiful car, red calipers. Um, all right, let's 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 plow ahead here. Uh, I have yet to watch the Japanese Formula One. I feel like I I got you guys all excited who are into that type of racing. Uh, or into racing, I guess just to say, and uh, and I've just I've dropped the ball on um, Singapore, Malaysia, and now Japan. It's just because this fucking house I'm renting, this guy has like cable from like the fucking eighteen hundreds, and uh, I got all the races taped. I've watched Singapore. I haven't watched Malaysia yet, where uh, Lewis Hamilton was going to win the race, and then for whatever reason, his engine just fucking blew up. I have no idea who won. The Japanese one, I haven't gone on the internet. I'm not looking at my Twitter feed. I'm going to watch that tomorrow. Um, and me and Nia actually knew a couple of people that were over in Japan, and I was, you know, they're having a baby or something. So they're, they're doing a, a baby moon, which I guess is people, before they have a baby, they go some f- fucking place. And, uh, you know, they're in Japan. So I was saying to Nia, it's hilarious. Typical guy shit. This is typical guy women shit. Like I say, oh, fuck, they're in Japan? Well, well, text so and so. Let him know that the Formula One race is there tomorrow, man, and that he should go. And then my wife's just like immediately, just looking at like a chick, like, yeah, she's not going to want to do that. And I'm thinking, like, yeah, but he would. This fucking guys like into motorcycles and cars and off road. Why the fuck wouldn't you want to do go to a Formula One race in Asia? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm telling you, if, if even if you're not into that shit, you got to watch the Singapore. The Singapore 
race was fucking incredible. Like they do it at night. And then after when um, the city's in beautiful, right? Granted, you're not allowed to do anything. And one of the guys spit gum on the street and they fucking detained him for six hours. Um, I think they were just showing off because when I was there, I was like, I heard if you spit gum on the, on the street, you get arrested. They go, nah, they'll give you a fine. Or, it's not like that. Or maybe they were soft peddling at the hotel so you wouldn't be afraid to go out and go spend some money. I have no idea. But all I know is this one of the fucking guys from either Ferrari or Mercedes or somebody spit some gum out and they fucking detained him for six hours. Um, but anyways, they ran it at night and that city is, is gorgeous at night. It's beautiful. And then when, uh, who won that one? Nico, when Nico Rosberg won that race, they just shoot off all of these fireworks, man. And they go all the fuck out. And, um, so I've yet to see the, uh, the Malaysia one. So I'm going to watch that and the Japanese one tomorrow if I have the time. Um, all right. What else? What else did I want to talk about? What else was a big... Oh, you know what I started to watch? I started to watch... Before I came down, I'm taping this... Uh, I'm taping this Sunday night. I started to watch the Trump-Hillary debate. I mean, I, I just still cannot fucking believe these are our two choices. And, uh, dude, Trump... I got to give it up to Trump, dude. That guy's one-liners are just... For a, for a politician, Jesus Christ, he's fucking... He kills. The guy fucking kills. He's great on his feet. He'd make a terrible president. He's got no idea what the fuck he's doing or what he's even talking about. It's just like the dope versus the devil. You know, and I know everybody, oh, that old fucking, you know, that shit that he said, ah, I just go up, I grab him by the pussy. I mean, nobody just does that. <laughs> I felt bad for Billy Bush. You know, he was just sitting there. He's like, he's sitting there, some fucking unknown 2005, you know. He's still kind of unknown, you know. Billy Bush, I'm going to talk about people who are in movies. He's not in a movie, you know? He's a talking head. Cut the guy a little slack. He's sitting there with the Don. The Don's talking shit. He's talking about women, you know, as guys do. I just walk right up and I kiss him. I grab him right by the pussy. You know, Billy's just like, this is Donald Trump. You know, you get caught up in the fame. Oh, yeah, yeah, grab him by the pussy. (laughs) He just went along with it. You know, stay strong, Billy Bush. You shouldn't have deleted your fucking... Twitter account, man. You should have hung in there. Fuck these people. They just, they get mad for like three fucking days. You know what I mean? It's unfucking believe. He's going to get more shit for that than fucking Hillary's going to get for the goddamn, you know, classified fucking emails, classified information through her own fucking email. And just somehow that all goes under the rug. I cannot stand. I can tell when Hillary's lying too. She, that smile she does, you can see it in her eyes when she's lying. And Trump is like, I, 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 I just don't, he's like a fucking cartoon character. Like Alec Baldwin as Trump is more believable than Trump as Trump. That's how fucking nuts this guy is. So I started to watch it. Oh man, Trump had some funny ones. He said to Hillary, he said, if I was running this country, you'd be in jail. <laughs> you know what's funny? To really see how hard Donald Trump goes, there's a clip. I don't know if you can still find it. The, the first time Donald Trump was on Letterman and he and Rosie O'Donnell had said something about him and he went off on Rosie O'Donnell and he goes, well, you know, she's a degenerate. And like it was just so over the top. Letterman was laughing, just going like, Donald, you just can't go around saying that about people. And he's just like, yeah, no, it's true. She's overweight. He just fucking like. Just no filter, just went right after him. And uh, he hasn't changed at all since he's become a politician. Having said that, like, I, I, you know, doesn't mean he's going to make a good president. He's just, you know, I can't get, I can't get past how many overtly racist people love the guy. And that's, that's always a major red flag. You know what the fuck it is with this fucking election? It's like you either got the guy that's going to rally up the fucking neo-Nazis the guy that rallies up the white guys that think that there's something being taken away from him, you know, or you got Hillary, you know, but he's actually, you know, or you got Hillary who's actually gonna, she's going to be in bed with the corporate cunts up at the fuck. It's like a lose, lose. Either you got somebody like rallying up this fucking cesspool of people at the bottom uh, as far as mental, I'm not talking financially, 
mentally speaking, or you got Hillary who's just, you know, she's going to give them their wars. She's going to let the fucking robots be made and all that sh- You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what that... Oh, my God. It's just fucking... It's, and her fucking pantsuits. Uh, the, that's the only thing I like about her. I love the pantsuit. If I was a chick, I would wear fucking pantsuits. I mean, you, you got to go with it. At some point, as a woman, you reach your pantsuit age, and you just got to give into it. That's like a man. At some point... You got to stop wearing your tag tops and you got to put on a sport coat. All right. Try to keep the carbs low. Do the best you can. You know, at some point you just get to that fucking age. So uh, I know a lot of you are like, why didn't you bring up the Tom Brady's back and all that type of shit? Because uh, you know what? We played the Cleveland Browns. No disrespect, but Cleveland Browns are where they're at. And congratulations to the fucking Indians. You guys looking like you're kicking our ass we're down oh two i watched like pedroia's first at bat and the plane landed so i missed all of that game i'm missing every fucking game because this guy doesn't have a god i mean this is this is when i come in with my brand new red Sox hat um but i do know the blue jays were up two games to none i don't know what's going on with that series right now they were up three to two the last i saw in game three but um tom brady's back gronkowski's back we won um buffalo's on a tear they're looking good. Um, I don't know. I, I just it was just great to see Brady back. Uh, yeah, it's unbelievable that whole fucking thing. That that's I'm telling you. I give it 20 years, and then NFL films when they look back on it, be like, do you think that was fair? Do you think it was fair that one of the greatest players in the history of the game had his entire fucking integrity questioned by one of the biggest scumbags to ever own a fucking team? Um who basically hired a guy for an in-house investigation. I mean, I, I still cannot, I cannot fucking wait for that. How old will I be? 68. Um, all right. Tom Brady will be 58. All right. 60 minutes, everybody. All right. Hey, Bill, I saw your tweet about 60 minutes about a ro- about the talking robot piece. Yeah. Charlie Rose was sitting there talking to this artificial intelligent robot that really moved bad. Speaking of fucking Westworld, Right. And he asked the robot what its goals were. First of all, that a robot would have goals like a person, okay? And the robot said, my goal is to one day be smarter than human beings. So I tweeted, you know, I basically tweeted, please unplug that fucking thing, all right? So he goes, "Um, I come somewhere between unplug it and ah, fuck it. It seems like everyone knows the machines will be our doom, but I feel like everyone involved and even everyone else just looking on has a, but will they take over type of curiosity? My question, I don't know what you meant by all that. My question to you is that if in 10 years, the robots are filling in as clerks at stores or working the lobby of hotels, would you be comfortable as a customer in those locations? Also, also, I highly recommend the new Westworld remake on HBO. Yes. I thought that was Netflix. My fault. HBO. Uh, it's totally up your alley, and I'm sure you remember the original with good old Yul Brenner. How funny is that? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I already talked about it. I loved it. Um, this is what I think. I actually think that uh, that those um, robots will make human beings obsolete. I know that sounds fucking crazy, but they will. Okay? And... They don't have to sleep. They don't have to fucking do anything. They'll outwork us and all that type of shit. And they're going to act like then, then we finally get to sit around and chill out, right? Like that was, that was the big promise of all of this technology that was going to be coming out in the future. I mean, there's always technology, but the, the newer technology, the technology of the future, you know, the three-day work week. They used to make fun of that on, on the Jetsons. Oh, these three-day work weeks are brutal. People are working more than they have ever worked in their fucking lives in this race to, I don't even know what the fuck, why the, can can somebody please tell me what the fuck we need robots for? What do we need any of this shit for? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like somewhere in like the mid nineties, like that was good. We advanced enough with cars, travel, we advanced enough with medicine and that type of shit. I mean, basically from 1995 on, if you fucking die and then, I mean, I mean, I don't know the amount of shit that you could sidestep tuberculosis, polio, all of these fucking things, the, all those plagues from back in the day, they were all gone. I mean, something, I don't know. It's hard when it's somebody, you know, and love, or obviously if it's fucking you, but like, um, 
I don't know. I think the population, I've always talked about it. I always, it's a major fucking problem. And I don't know how they go. Like, I just feel like those things will come along and they'll just be like, well, you have those things that don't need to, uh, they don't need a flat screen TV. They don't need any of that type of shit. They can do the work of 10 people. Or let's say they can do the work of four people. Then there's three extra people out there, isn't there? Or there's four extra people out there. Let's fucking cut this thing down by 25%. I mean, there's already too many fucking people walking around. You can have a bunch of robots walking around too. At some point, something's got to give. All right? And I can guarantee you one thing. Robots are never forming a union. All right? They're not going to. So I think they'll be smart enough to, to not get them to do that. But the greed of going after the dollar and making one that's just a little bit better, just a little bit better, like these fucking iPhones, I think we could get ourselves into a, a tough situation. And um, here's a question I have. Uh, if you kill a robot in the future, like, is that going to be considered property damage? At what point will that actually be considered murder one or murder two or robot slaughter? They'll have to have all these new laws you know what I mean? Like, what if they make them like what they're trying to do? Like, they're probably trying to make them fuckable at some point, like that fucking movie I saw like a year ago. You know? What if you go out and you fuck somebody else's robot? You know? Like, hey, that's my robot. You just came in my fucking robot. What the fuck? Even though it's self-cleaning and all that shit, I can't fucking do that, right? You're just really opening up a fucking can of worms there. Um... <laughs> All right, clown sightings. Um, Oh, shit, Nia's calling me. My episode of The Simpsons is on tonight. Is it on? What are you doing? I'm doing the podcast. I know, you're supposed to be done. It's on in like a minute. Well, I can hit pause. Well, hurry up. Hey, come here. What? I don't want to miss it. Put your eyebrows down. You're like, what are you doing? (laughs) I don't want to miss it. Hey, how nice is my car? It's very nice. It's awesome. Ugh. I thought you were going to go harder than that. I think we say it was like gorgeous. All right. How, how good was the potato pancake? That was delicious. It was better than the restaurant. Is it me or do you guys just have like a distinct <laughs> lack of fucking passion? This is totally you. Like, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do now. For the love of God, go fucking do it. And I'm sitting there like a little six-year-old. Mommy, look what I can do. <laughs> All right. Just hit pause. I'll be up there in a second. I can't hit pause. There's no DVR. Oh, all right. I know this guy's fucking depression era fucking uh, cable. All right, I'm just going to hit pause here, and then we'll we'll come back and finish this. All right, you know, and after all that, it wasn't even on. I can't, she fucking went off on how great the potato pancake was. She thought the car was gorgeous. You see what they do? You see what they do? You see what they do? All of a sudden, I'm, I'm fucking bragging a little bit. Ah. Oh, it goes out there. Always trying to fucking knock, knock you down a little bit. All right. Here we go. Clown sightings. You're listening to one right now. All right. Clown sightings. Dear Freckles, have you heard about this clown hysteria? Sorry. Have you heard about this clown hysteria? Um, freaks are dressing up as creepy clowns and going out in public trying to scare people. Yeah, I've seen those. Just search creepy clown sightings. As a bunch of sh- and a bunch of shit pops up. Uh, other people are now starting to go out to go clown hunting and beating the shit out of clowns that they see in public. Now, how the fuck do you go about doing that? Isn't it? There's like nine people in the country that have done that. Let's go out clown hunting. Like, like where do clowns hang out? Do they have a natural habitat? Is there a bush you can go to? The clown bush? Shake it a little bit? Throw some rocks into it? Anyways, my question is one of is if one of these clowns charged at you, what what would you do? Do you think it would be legal to run over slash beat the shit out of the fuckers, or should you let the misfit go without harming him? Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Um, I think at this point I've seen enough of those videos that somebody, if one of them came running at me with, like, dragging the body and it's just so fucking over the top... Uh, I don't know, I, but you, you'd have to just out of respect for yourself, your own safety, you'd have to fucking back up or run away. Yeah, I mean, if a guy came running at me, because with my luck, this would be the guy who isn't fucking around. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, what's up, YouTube, world star, whatever. <laughs> Take a fucking axe to the head. Um, 
But, you know, I don't think that you should go. I'm, I don't like clown hunting to me is hilarious. Like how the fuck would you even remotely begin to know where to look? You know what I mean? Like there was that thing for a while where people were putting train horns in their vehicles. And those people uh, should be prosecuted because, you know, my ears are fucked up from years of going to concerts and playing drums and shit. And like somebody did that one time. When I went by, you know, it's funny watching people jump and shit, but like it was close enough that it did even more damage to my left ear, which is fucked up. And it's like, that's something now that I, I have to live with because this person wanted to have a laugh. I mean, the ringing went away, but they definitely, uh, when you do shit like that, I mean, you are kind of asking, you are asking for it. You shouldn't do it. Like the other people, you shouldn't go beat the shit out of the person. They're just fucking around trying to make a funny video. I mean, you really have to go beat the fuck out of them. Uh, but when you do scare somebody to that level, uh, maybe that is a, a thing that you can kind of expect. I don't fucking, I don't know what the rules of clowning is. All right, now she's texting me saying that it's starting. All right, hang on, stopping again. Every time I get momentum, you know, we get a fucking holding call and it just kills the drive. All right, now back again. Guess what? It wasn't even the episode. It was the wrong episode. It was a pre-episode. To the episode that they're going to show that I'm on. All right. Anyways. Um, all right. Waterproof electronics. Waterproof electronics. All right. Uh, dear Billy Wet, wet Phone. Uh, just to let you know, the waterproof or water resistance rating on electronics is bullshit. The same goes for watches and any other water resistant item. Here's how they determine the water resistant. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you pour water onto anything, it's going to gradually seep through, right? Um, although boats don't, (laughs) ah, that must've been the dumbest I've ever sound. Boats do. Okay. Uh, they stick the phone in water in a water filled tank and then increase the pressure until the phone has problems. The water in the tank is perfectly still and the pressure stimulates, uh, simulates the depth below sea level. Um, it's a bullshit test because the water you drop your phone into is probably splashing all about and your phone is going to move in the water as it sinks. Um, If you don't drop your phone into an ocean or a river, you might drop it into the kitchen full of detergent or some other situation that isn't perfectly still water pressurized under test conditions. It's another marketing trick, which technically legally correct for the fine print, but is bullshit uh, for the day to day life. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's got to be better than the shit that isn't waterproof where you just fucking sneeze on it and it doesn't work. Um, I know my watch, I kept wearing it while I was doing cardio and all of a sudden it was fucked up and it was just cause it was on my wrist and just sweating every day. It got wet. Um, I don't fucking know. I have no idea. It's probably all bullshit. I know when like when they do miles, you know, how much a car gets miles per gallon, they drove it like they drive it like one mile an hour with no headwind for most of the fucking test. Um, Cleo, what is going on with you, buddy? What is going on with you? Go lay down. Jesus Christ. Are you allergic to the rug every time you come down here? You start flipping out. All right. Um, let me do these last couple of reads and then I can finish with the questions here. Sorry for the whole fucking pause and then going on this week. All right. MVMT watches, everybody. Pronounced movement. Oh, That's what I'm supposed to say. All right. Movement Watches, everybody, was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. The watchmaker's uh, goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high quality minimalist products at revolutionary prices. With over 500,000 watches sold to customers in 160 plus countries around the world, Movement Watches has solidified itself as the world's fastest growing watch company. Um podcast slash radio evergreen copy why would you tell me that I, what's the difference between this and what you'd say on television i guess the company started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but they couldn't afford them so they started their own company that sentence never makes sense to me they're two broke college kids they can't afford a watch a stylish watch so they start a company I can't afford a G5 jet. I think I'll start a jet company. How is <laughs> how is this like how is this like how you started 
built a following, launched into podcasts, YouTube, radio, etc. I'm not supposed to be reading this shit. Oh, I'm supposed to be like, oh, these guys remind me of how I, fo- oh, how I did it. Um, Movement Watches start. I don't know where I am in this copy right now. This is this is a shit show. Movement Watches start at just ninety five bucks at a department store. Uh, you're looking at four to five hundred bucks. Movement, Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. All right, we're making sense again. Over five hundred thousand watches sold in over one hundred sixty countries. Good for you. Get fifteen percent off today with free shipping and free returns. Go uh, by going to movementwatches.com slash burr. That's M-V-M-T, watches.com slash burr. This watch has a really clean design. Seriously, uh, you're going to love it. If you put it on, you're going to get compliments. Now's the time to, to step up your watch game without breaking the bank. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash burr. It's fucking hilarious, right? I want a purebred dog. I can't afford one. So I started pure breeding dogs. That's not even a good example. I wouldn't even know how you'd fucking do that. I wanted my own island, but I couldn't afford one. So I, I bought islands. I started, I started a company that made islands. Bill, we get it. All right. All right. Stamps.com, everybody, is the easiest and convenient way to get postage right from your desk. Buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. With Stamps.com, there's no guesswork. They make it easy to get exact postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail the instant you need it. I use Stamps.com to send out all my posters whenever I'm selling them, like next weekend. Saturday through fucking Wednesday in Washington, D.C., I'll have a poster. The tune-up, the tune-up for my special. Um, sign up for Stamps.com and use my last name, Burr, for this special offer. Four-week trial plus $110 bonus offer, including a po- including postage and a digital stale- scale. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. You click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. There's no reason to keep going to the post office, all right? Okay. Let's get back to the fucking questions here. Um, let's see. Where the hell was I? Okay. Water. Dear Billy Wet Phone. All right. We did that one. Okay. Uh, it's all you. This thing said, P.S. Uh, keep a little black book full of your phone numbers from now on so that you never lose another contact. I'm actually doing that with a little, couple of little red books. I couldn't find the black ones. All right. CEO. Hey there, Billy Boss. If you could become CEO of any company for a couple of months, which company would it be and what would you try to change? Uh, Monsanto, and I'd stop poisoning the food. <laughs> oh, Anthony Monsanto, which is now owned by Bear. Bear doesn't care. Uh, imagine uh, you have a few months, so it's not like you get to... Get fired day one for joining Apple and changing the name to Orange for selfish purposes. Also, you pick Apple and can also pick any other company you talk less about as well. Ha ha, thanks for everything. Uh, I think I answered it. I think I also, my dyslexia kicked in and none of those sentences made sense to anybody. Those last two ones. What did it say? Oh, it gives a shit. Yeah, that's what I would do. I I would, I don't know. It would be nice if, the way corporations were run, you know, at some point you made enough money and at some point you thought, well, hey, what would this be doing to the environment? Or what would this be? You know, I actually heard that they're lobbying. They got all these lobbies going on right now to make marijuana illegal again at the state level because allegedly uh, prescriptions medication has dropped drastically uh, in states where marijuana use is legal. And uh, so they want to make it legal, illegal again, evidently. My question is, is, well, why don't the big pharmaceutical companies just start making weed, you know, and phase out these other fucking pills? They're not working anyways. You know they don't work. You know all those fucking side effects. I mean, it's fucking nuts. This is shit that you can take, literally, that's just for something like really basic. And if you get on it for a while, if you come off it, if you come off it too fast, there's the chance you might kill yourself. I mean, they never had stuff like that when I was a kid. You know, somebody was all over the place. They were, they were fucking, they were called a spaz. The dude's a fucking spaz, man. He's all over the fucking place. You know what I mean? I know that's a bad word in Scotland. My apologies, but that doesn't mean shit to us. You guys say cunt every other word. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know. 
that's one of those super depressing kind of questions because when you really think about it, there's really no fucking reason for our behavior towards one another. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I don't know. I think it just comes down to there's just really, you know, you know, remember when you watch like Planet of the Apes? It was like the chimps, they were the fucking doctors. Then you had the orange ones, they were the old ones. And then you had the gorillas and they were like the fucking maniacs or whatever. Um, which was sort of oddly racist. They were the darkest of all the apes, you know what I mean? They were the worst. And I guess what, the chips were subtly supposed to, I guess the orange ones were supposed to be gingers and we were supposed to be the best of people. I don't know. You can, you can always read into all of this shit, but like, I don't know. I, I think, I think people are kind of like that. You know what I mean? You got fucking nice kind of, Hey man, you know, whatever you fucking happy, man, you know? And then you just got fucking complete psychos who would literally stab a baby in the head to get another inch forward. And I think those people really succeed in life. Like when you just don't give a shit about, you know, and I'm not saying I'm a fucking perfect person because I've done some horrific shit, but I'm just saying, you know, that's just the, the pain that I've caused on an, on an individual level. Forget about if you're doing it at the fucking corporate level. Um, I don't know. I just love those people who go, well, if I didn't do it, someone else would be doing it. That That's that's usually a good, that's usually a nice red flag that you're doing something fucked up. But um, I really think that we are, uh, this is depressing. You might want to shut it off now. I think we are, the, uh, there's a flaw in our design and the way we are wired, we are, it's inevitable that we're going to destroy ourselves. Um, it's just, you know, and I really don't think that it's not even necessarily a human thing. It would be like whatever the next thing on the food chain was, if we weren't here, it would be taking too much and it would in its own fucking way would be fucking up the balance of nature and all that type of shit. But uh, I don't know if I 100% believe that, but I just look at it that way because then I don't, I can just, I can deal with some of the shit like uh, that I see. I, I do have to say, though, this presidential election and these two choices is one of the most depressing fucking things uh, I've been around in a long fucking time. I can't believe, I just can't fucking believe it's a reality TV show star or the fucking devil. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Halloween costume. Let's get off that topic. Hey, Bill, when was the last time you dressed up for Halloween? Uh, two years ago. I dressed up as John Bonham. Um, if you had to go to one of these celebrity dress-up parties, like where Heidi Klum goes all out every year and shows up looking like an extra from the Tom Cruise movie Legend, what would you dress up as? Uh, when millions of women look at a U.S. Weekly at the hair salon, who will they see Billy Redface dressed up as uh, when they get to the celebrities wear stupid costumes just like us uh, section? Um, well, first of all, those are all the beautiful people, so I'm out. I'm not in that section, so I don't think they would. But let's just say all the beautiful people got hit by a truck and it got all the way down to I, you know, was in that thing. Let's see. I, I I would probably John Bonham. I've done that one enough. Who would I dress up as? Somebody like that's known but sort of obscure. Because you don't want to be the, like the twelfth douche to show up. You know, dressed as like Donald Trump is going to be like the, everybody's doing that. Or Hillary. You don't want to dress up as Steve Jobs. I still think he's fucking known well enough. You gotta you gotta dress up like. Uh, uh, let's see here. Who'd be a good one? Who's a good fucking... They were the... Sh- you know what I mean? Like, if you were going to dress up like somebody in... Uh, you know what? You got me. This is so I would have... This is something... You just can't fucking pull this gem out. Like, you know what? Dressing up like the professor instead of Gilligan. It's basically that formula, but not that example. You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck lost the last presidential race? Obama ran against who? Was it McCain? I don't know, but Tina Fey did the fucking, the chick, she did that one to death. I don't know, you know some Bill Belichick might be a good one. For as well known as he is, if I was out here in L.A. and I just dressed like him, I think people would love it, a hoodie with the fucking cut off sleeves. You just have it up, you know? Maybe him. You know what? I, I would go Vince Lombardi. Maybe an old football coach. Go out as Tom Landry. But I got to pick somebody with a fucking blockhead like mine. Something like that. 
Something along those lines. Rather than like the hacky ones. You don't want to go out as fucking Chewbacca. Anything from Star Wars. Any superhero. I mean, that's just fucking lame. Trump, Hillary, that's fucking lame. Obama, you, if you're me, you're going to get in trouble for being in blackface. So you got to leave them alone. Oh, uh, shit. That's a good question. I'd go out as like Phil Rudd, drummer for ACDC. And people say, who are you? I'd say Phil Rudd. And, they, and people said, who's that? And I'd be like, oh, you got to be ashamed of yourself. And you just walk away. So you get to like have a cool costume and scold people. There's a way to go. You know, pick somebody who people you, you feel should know, but they don't know. Address is Clive Burr. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. All right. That's the podcast for this week, everybody. Uh, I'm going to watch those Formula One races. I'm hoping the Red Sox can come back. I just want to be able to sit down and watch a fucking game. I don't know anybody on the team. I know Pedroia and I know Big Poppy. When he leaves, I'm just going to know Pedroia. Um, plus, this one Cleveland fan was like fucking talking shit to me. A buddy of mine. He's going, oh, fucking... You know, Tito's playing a chess game with the fucking Red Sox. And I jokingly wrote back, like, "Ah, you don't need to talk to me. You don't need to talk to a Red Sox fan about Tito playing chess. I I saw him play chess a few times when he was here. And it just completely went over the guy's head. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just sitting there going, like, hey, man, you guys are looking pretty good. Nothing. Our bullpen's dominating. We're fucking, we have a couple of injuries. And then Emil's just like, I hope you cunts don't win another one in 60 years. I was fucking rooting for you. Um, ah, fuck. Do I have another phoner tomorrow? I have one phoner. This is when you call in. Oh, shit. I'll get up that early for these guys. Hey, I'm going to be on the Sports Junkies. I love these guys. I haven't talked to these guys in fucking forever. The Sports Junkies. I remember Lurch would always be fucking sitting there all splailed, like six foot ten guy. Always in sweatpants. Uh, I'm going to be calling in at 6.20 a.m., which is 9.20 uh, Eastern time. Going to be calling that, and that's to um, promote my shows at the National Theater, October 15th through the 19th. 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th. Five nights running my fucking mouth, getting ready for my special, and then I do the special, and then my fucking year is basically over. Um, I'm just going to edit the rest of fucking season two. I'm going to be doing Comics Come Home in Boston, and uh, that's going to be about it. It's going to be about it. All right. Well, that's the podcast for this week. Once again, I really meant that about being able to buy that car. Um, thank you to everybody who came out to my shows throughout the fucking years. And uh, that's it. Jacksonville, I hope you guys can dig yourselves out nice and quick. I bet the weather's nice now, now that it's fucking over. Um, and I hope the insurance companies don't fuck you too bad. Um, but either way. When you can go back to that city again when I get my next hour, I'm definitely going to come through because Jacksonville is always going to be on my tour schedule. I always have a good time when I, when I run through there. And who's kidding who? I got to get back to Gainesville to make that up, which I think I might be doing in February because uh, in February I'm going to be going to the Daytona 500. I've always wanted to go to that thing. Way back since Rusty Wallace, Harry Gant, Darrell Waltrip, Cale Yarborough, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, right? Dale Earnhardt. Who else ran back then? Dick Trickle. Um, All right. That's the podcast. Fuckos. I will talk to you. I'll check in on you on Thursday. I I really had to try not to make a noise when I sat up there doing that shit. All right. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Anything Better podcast show, NFL edition, going into week number Six. Uh, hope everybody's doing good in between shows. We are back this week. But before we get into our picks this week, uh, let's shout out the sponsor. It's the BetMGM app. It's the best sports betting app out there, guys. Um, and here's how it works. All you got to do is uh, download the app on your device, on your phone, and um, use our code, a bonus code BURR. That's B-U-R-R. And you deposit as little up to $10, as little as $10 deposit, and uh, you will get uh, on your first bet, you'll get fifteen dollar, uh, fifteen hundred dollars uh, in bonus bets if your bet loses. Uh, so there you go. It's very, very easy. You put in as little as ten dollars, and you use our code bonus code. Burr. You're in the game. Ten bucks. 
Ten bucks. You tell me and another the, fucking. You walk in ten dollars in Dunkin' Donuts, they'll tell you to screw. Dude, Just ten and, and, inflation. and if your initial bet loses, you you know you'll still get uh you'll still get bonus bonus uh bets fifteen hundred in bonus bets. I mean, what, what else do you want? Use our code bonus code Burr, hey, B-U-R-R. Paulie. Yeah, Paulie went three and one. All his doubters. All is doubt is, Paulie, yo, you're on the hot seat and all that. I've been telling you for years. He's <laughs> yeah. ice cold in September. <laughs> <laughs> he catches fire. He catches fire in October. And well, here's what you I know, got for you, Paulie. I'm wearing my glasses this whole episode. You know why? I can't see it, Paul. I'm oh, looking yeah. at the lines this week. I might as well be reading Chinese. I, I, I have a better uh, chance picking a CFL game right now. Who do you like, Paul? The Winnipeg Blue Bombers or the fucking BC Eagles? Dude, Where's I don't even like that. Is? I don't think Vegas even knows, dude. Vegas this year is just they been so know weird. they're in fucking bed with all of them. Um anyway, I gotta Sorry, I gotta I, I gotta I thank I gotta thank um I got to thank the uh, Anything Better fans, dude. I gotta thank everybody who watched my special, dude. I put my special you had out a big my week, Paul. You dude, had a big week. I put my special out. La yesterday a day it's 24 it's a day old i put it out yesterday i put my own money up for it dude over 200 comments came in people saying best of his three somebody goes i'm two minutes in and i just screamed in my living room verzi don't miss and they were like nothing but net <laughs> ten out, they were saying 10 out of 10 classic so i really really appreciate it Paul, uh if you put that special out in september it would have bombed Birthing yeah. <laughs> you're Mr. October. You're the Mr. October. What a week you had. You went three and one. The yeah. Yankees, big victory last night. Yep. Big victory, dude. I mean, fucking three takes it. You got, you got to, it's one, one. You got to win last night. They came back. They tied it up two, two. I was watching. Paul, here's a pet peeve of mine. I don't like those guys, the hybrid pitchers. It's not overhand and it's not sidearm. I feel like those fucking guys, they're like cockeyed. They can't throw a strike. Yeah. There was yeah, a, no. I feel like you got one of those guys and and the uh this guy was half Dan Quisenberry last night. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's both New York teams. Both New York teams uh seem like they're good. Imagine another Yankees and uh Mets, another Yankees dude, Mets, the Mets uh, World closed Series. Out the fucking Phillies. Yeah, well the Mets I are on fire. That series, dude. Huh? The Mets, the Mets are just really like caught caught a nice fire at the right time yeah you know what i like on kansas city i don't know his name i love their catcher he just looks like a catcher like an old school catcher too not like yeah. not like not like joe girardi who looked like a catcher because he was jacked yeah he just looks like he looks like roy campanella or something like 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 on a classic baseball card and he had that yeah. big <laughs> single when they were trying to get the rally going he hits after uh bobby witt jr dude i love october baseball yeah I love it. I don't know why people, they, they, and I, I get it because, you know, basketball, hockey, and all of that. It's, it's really a fucking shame. If baseball had any fucking brains, Paul, they would shorten their regular season. Oh, 100% got to be shorter. They would get their fucking playoffs out of the way before hockey and before the NBA. I mean, marriages break up this time of year, Paul. It's, Dude, it's fucking insane. All, all, all four are going. 162 games is way too, it's like, and that's why when you listen to sports talk and radio, they're like, what's happening to this team? It's like, what's happening to the team is they're five months into the season and people, that's what's happening to the team. Um, all right, let's get into these picks. Cause, uh, we are both short on time, but thank you guys for watching the special reasonable man on my YouTube page. I'm completely overwhelmed by the keep first day. Let's keep it coming it up and do my podcast. We're going to blow you out. Paul this is what you guys don't know. Paulie is so close to making some fucking <laughs> stupid money in this business and he's going to come on here shirtless with the fur coat challenging somebody you know what i love paul versey with some money is going to be one of the funnest things i ever fucking seen oh I'm you know it. A convertible you get a horse this paul, paul you, you like to spend you paul, know what like i spend. you know what i knew that the special was doing way good was they were looking for things. They were like, this is hilarious, but is the sound good? Like, that's what I knew. But one of my haters goes, one of my haters goes, you know, Paulie's starting to grow on me. This is hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's oh, my haters. God. You even, you even got the uh, the old man up in the balcony. 
Uh, my favorite one was though, he hits a swish, all that Verzi hit nothing but net and he never misses. But anyway, uh, thank you. And Bill, you, you Dude, helped. I'm sh- so proud of you, you and I'm so fucking happy for you. It's Dude, about and, time. And you, it's about you, goddamn time. you shared it. I really appreciate that. Same thing with Demos and everybody else. All right. We're into week six. We're into week six. Uh, I saw these lines. Andrew, can you throw these lines up? Because this was... Well, I, know we're, I know we're pressed for time, but we got to talk about how the Jets got rid of their coach. He doesn't even let them say goodbye. I mean, dude, dude that, that's, I mean, that's like ghosting a chick. You know what I mean? Be a man. Look her in the eye and just say, look, I want to fuck somebody else. I'm sorry. I just, you know, I didn't want to cheat on you. It's dude, not you. It's me and my dick. You know, at walk, least... Walking him to his car? Interview. Dude, walking uh-huh. him to his... Ca- Walking him to his car, like he like goes. There was can, an incident. Can I say goodbye to my guys? Nah, nah. I mean that. That's. I was joking. I just did Jim and Sam, and I was joking that they had his car started and warmed up for him when he walked out. <laughs> Dude, you know how frustrating it must be to be a coach of a jet and Jets and get walked out like that, when oh. they're acting like it's you. It's like, buddy, you haven't won since 1969. Don't fucking escort me out. Yeah. Like you guys were over here winning championships. Blindside me like that. And then I can't say goodbye to the players that love me that I love. Dude, he's going to be sitting in a bar talking about that 20 years from now. I'm not saying he's not going to have other successes, but that's going to be the one. Like that one chick who just fucking, you know, extra ripped your heart out. You never forget her. The yeah. Jets just did that. You know what? They got an enemy in that guy. Oh, dude. Tell me that guy's not going to get another job and mark the Jets on the calendar. Although I don't think he was a great head coach. I think he's a great defensive coordinator. But um, Well, can I ask you a question? How can you gauge anybody on the Jets? It's true. What's he got up? What's he got above him? Shit. What's he got below <laughs> him? Uh, Shit. Yeah. They always make the wrong fucking choice. It's a shit sandwich, Paul. Yeah, the shit sandwich, and he he's the he's the fucking baloney in the middle of it, and then they always fucking blame him. I think you're right when about you this. You take I, a head yeah. coaching job yeah. with the Jets. You're basically you might as well just send a fuck. You fill out a job application at ESPN to sit there. They all end up there. <laughs> all the Jets. <laughs> Herman Edwards, Rex Ryan. They just end up on TV wearing a suit. <laughs> That's hysterical. Imagine they was like, he was like, all right, now where's the, uh, like, as he's signing the, the contract for the Jets, he goes, yeah, is the ESPN thing? Do I, should we just do that's that? That's how here bad too? that job is. <laughs> that's how bad that job is. They have to, like, give you the, the best job in football, which is yeah. just talking football. All of those fucking guys, Jimmy Johnson, once he starts talking football, it doesn't have to deal with the hot seat. He's like, fuck this. I'm staying here once yeah. a week. What are they doing in Baltimore? All right, Jimmy, here's your check. Go back to your boat. All right, let's get into the picks here, Paul. Who's going first? Uh, it's week six, so hold on a second. You went, you went like year coat, one. Way, I dude. went year two. Oh, thank you. You went year one. I went year two. You went year three. Week, Paul, oh, no, the, the week, so week three, you're one. Just, you're just so it's me. So it's my, it's my first. It's, it's. Paul, I think it's, it's my your, pick. It's your month. I mean, what are we doing here? You should be picking first Jake, the whole month. Jake the Snake. Can we get an injury report? Uh, sure. For which game? Any any big ones? Jake, don't um, think I don't notice you've been going to the gym. I'm seeing those packs <laughs> starting to peek through the t-shirt. This guy's doing he's doing a makeover this season. Thanks, Bill. Um, well, the Texans lost uh, their top receiver, Nico Collins. That that was the biggest one that went on IR uh, yesterday. Um, so that's one to watch out for. But there's is so he many- done for the year? No, just for a like a month. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. That, that hurts. He's the leader. You wanted to take the play. month off, Paul, to watch your special. That's that's how hard you There you go. Him. That's right. You're You're a reasonable man, baby. Right now. Did you come that's up with something from this show? Thing, you you, you, you want to hear you want to hear something nuts? I have swear to God, I'm we got a I got a, a an up to date uh breaking news right now. The assistant general manager of the New York Giants just text texted me during this. I swear to God, the assistant general manager of the New York Giants just texted me said, during the this stream. Point. No, he said, I'm watching your special this weekend. I swear to God. <laughs> that's, that's I swear to God, dude. How nuts is that? Oh, Christmas uh, comes early every year for Paul Versey. Dude, this is your month. Absolutely. Um, 
Black people all right, have February, Andrew. gays have June, and Paul Versi has October. Uh, Versi do, Andrew, can we, can we get computer. the lines? Can we get the lines for all the games up? Is that a possibility? Because I think I go Paul, first. You, 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 what you do is you put it on your fucking phone, and then you you have you, you go into this display in brightness and just say "Never shut off the screen," and you're right there, Paul. I, I, hey, what? Andrew, you've taught me things. Yeah, and hey, the boy, you know, genius, stick. the boy genius from Beverly Hills. His rich parents didn't pay attention to him as a kid, and his best friends were his computers. Yeah, the, we I had so them. many houses that we just never ran into each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his friends um, were his computers, and he should be working at NASA right now, but he's trying to stick it to his dad by doing a podcast. Right. <laughs> this yeah, is your backstory. I, I threw the 4.0 away. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and share this screen here. and see. Dude, by the way, Bryce Harper, man, that guy is fun to watch in the playoffs. Dude just yeah. delivers. I know they got shut down or whatever, but like I, he, he turned that one game around. It looked like the Mets were going to sweep him. Game two. I'm Shane shocked Harper. the Dodgers didn't choke just yet, but there's still time. Probably tomorrow. What's that series? 2-1 right, Padres? 2-2. Two, two. Dodgers had it yesterday. I'm in. I'm in Sirius XM, and I have to do it this way because I'm running around. Jaguars plus two versus the Bears. Just talk to me, Paul. I like the Jaguars. I, I think that the Bears had a good week last week, but they played the Carolina Panthers, and I saw the Jaguar. The Jags came back and won that game. I think uh, there we go. There game we is go. A, game is in London, Paulie. By the way, just letting you know. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, I like. I like Jacksonville. I'm going to take Jacksonville getting points in London against the Bears. I know the Bears are good, but I think Trevor Lawrence and them figured something out last week, and uh, I like them getting the points. So let's do that. All right. Old Billy boys going with the Buffalo Bills Monday night. Minus two and a half against the Jets in in the Meadowlands or wherever the fuck you guys play over there. Um, you know, the Jets are in flux right now. I don't think they're turning around in a week. I'm sure, Jake, you're going to say somebody's injured. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Minus two and a half. I like it. I like it. I think they, they're going to beat them. And um, I don't know. I just think I think the Jets are cursed. Yeah. I, I'm with Not you. even I'm with Aaron Rodgers or fucking Brett Favre or any of these guys that go there can turn them around. All right, I like hey, it. You know well, what? Good on that coach. Good for him. He got out of that fucking haunted house. The Amityville yeah. horror of the NFL. All right, I'm going to do something I normally don't do, but I'm going to take a lot of points. And I am going to take the Cleveland Browns getting nine. I don't think the Philadelphia Eagles are that good of a team yet. Not saying they can't turn it around, but Jalen Hurts looks different. I, I think the Browns. Face, sort of quitting on the fucking team yeah. last week. Uh, well, I think that everybody's, yeah, I think everybody's saying he stinks and all this stuff. I think he's going to, I think he's, if the competitor in him is going to bounce back nine points is a lot, they could lose the game and still get some garbage points at the end. I'm going to take the Browns. I like old against the grain Pauly. Uh, I'm going to take the Texans, even with that big injury, minus Damn seven it. over my new England Patriots. It's just like, we are fucking hapless. I hate to say it. We're just, we haven't found our footing with the new crew. And it's also a way that I can watch the Patriots and get a positive. Either they fucking, the worst is when you bet against your team, they cover and they still lose. This is a big enough spread. Obviously, this is very doable, but I'm taking the Texans. Oh, Billy, win some, lose some. Two and two last week. Um, I am Chiefs going are to off this week, Paul. That's always my yeah. lock. The NFL. That's their story this year. What is that? Uh, the, what is the Chargers line? Are the Chargers getting two and a half, or are they minus two and a half? M minus two and a half. I'm going to take the Chargers to beat the Broncos. You bastard! I uh, well, hey, you took mine. You took mm -hmm. my Texans. It's even. Uh, Don't do that tit for tat shit with me. Don't hey, how did, I know? No, how, did I, how did I know? How did I know you were going to pick them? But um, yeah, I like the Chargers. I think they're better. All right. I like the Steelers going into the Raiders minus three and a half. That's another team. I don't know. I'm just betting against teams that can't seem to get their shit together. It's three now. That's what I have there. Oh, Andrew. okay. They said three and a half. Cool. 
Oh, did I? Maybe I said that. Yeah, no, no problem. Listen, you're the boy genius from Beverly Hills. I'm not going to go. <laughs> Are the ge- oh I'm boy. so sorry. Your parents never paid attention to you like that. Your, pa- your real parents are the salt of the earth. They're going to see this. Like, Why was he saying that? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take, dude, I can, can't see or hear on this one. I feel like I'm losing my senses. I'm going to take the Lions minus three um, over the Cowboys. I just think golf is so good, and uh, I think they're well coached. Wait, wait, they're and, playing the Bengals. No, no, no they're not. The, the Giants oh, are playing the, the Bengals. Giants. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you said the Li- Giants. Lions. 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 Those are my four. I'm taking the Lions. Minus three. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just yell, those are my four? You feel like you're on shifty ground. I love it. The second you did it, I didn't get to do it. Like, those are my four. All right, that's it. Fucking stick with it. <laughs> Paul, I'm not gonna lie to you right now. I am I am fucking I am I feel, in, I'm in the fucking I've, Bill, mist I right feel like now. Bill, I'm like a dealer in Vegas. I go, those are my four. Here we go like this. You just went like this. No more bets. <laughs> just went like that. The fucking roulette wheel. No more. No more. <laughs> no more bets. Oh, god damn it, Paul. God damn it, Paul. Am I gonna go? Am I gonna go into the DMZ of the <laughs> NFL? Am I gonna go NFC South? Oh, the Nobody knows years. what happens three and down a half, there. Paul. Why's it got to be three and a half? Because they know, Bill. They know. They, they know. They fucking know. I'm staying away from that. I think the Saints are going to play strong at home. It's going to be a loss. Gonna be a... I know, yeah. but who the fuck are they, dude? Who are they? And then you got the Falcons of like minus six going Saints, into the Saints. Panthers. Also, Saints don't have Derek Carr. Uh, yeah. Like... Go with Saints your gut. Have Derek... So who do they got? Jameson Winston? Some some rookie, uh, Spencer Rattler. Spencer. Oh, Rattler, Oklahoma last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time ago. Spencer. Okay. Uh, Guys, I got five minutes, just so you know. Five minutes I got. Oh, don't rush me. Come on. You know this. Don't rush me, Taylor Dane. I heard that fucking thing before. Don't um, rush me. Remember that? Taylor Dane. Why does it got to be minus five, the fucking Packers at home? Why do they have to pick the for perfect number? You know what? Fuck this, Paul. I'm going to take the goddamn Saints. I'm going to take the fucking Saints. Three and a half. Getting three and a half at home. No one knows who this Spencer for hire kid is. He's out. What kind of kid named Spencer comes out of Oklahoma? He's an enigma, Paul. And he's going to confuse yeah. them. Okay? They're all going to be worried with this tornado coming or whatever the fuck it is. This biblical thing that's coming. What, what point, Paul, are we going to address global warming? Does Florida, Florida literally have to fall off like an appendix off of this country? You know what kills me? <laughs> is people are so fucking divided, liberals wouldn't care. The same way people on the right wouldn't give a shit if L.A. or California fell into the fucking ocean. That, that's how we're like rooting against fellow countrymen. Horrible. I've seen, um, I've seen comments about that, about it coming there. Good, man. Watch them all the way. How could you say that about your fellow that's, countrymen, Paul? That's terrible. Yeah. The locker it's room horrible. is divided. I like Florida, Paul. Some people in this world should just be killed. Um, <laughs> Segway. I mean, I feel um, like we could close the podcast on that one. <laughs> Quick Monday night uh, special, no, Bill, no. Bills and Jets Monday night. What do you think? Any? Uh... Hey, Paul. I like that Saints my wife pick, was being My wife was being moody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, this morning, I just been a, I feel like I've been a good guy. So I wrote her a poem. It no, all you rhymed. didn't. And I wrote, I know I, it all rhymed about all the shit I was doing for. Her. And then in the end was the punchline. I just got it. She laughed her ass off. That's why I married her. <laughs> That's great. Um, I, said, I said, I'm, I, I'm taking you to Paris. I'm hitting it like Maris. <laughs> <laughs> it was an epic That's fucking poem. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, and I like that Saints pick. You know why? Because that was your gut. So now you could sleep with it. It's all about sleeping with it. Um, <laughs> oh, that was your last day. You know what, Bill? I can sleep with I, I can go to sleep, sleep at night. I sleep well with my picks. I, I could sleep. Yeah, it's like I if, well. if I lose, sleep I could well. sleep with it. Um, I think we go Monday night special. We got to do j- uh, Bills, right? We got to take the Bills Monday night special. We got to do that. We got to do Monday night special. And then everybody's got to watch Paul Versus. Come on. You got to watch Paul Versus special. You gotta, you gotta, Reasonable you, man, you baby. You got to pump up the numbers. Reasonable right. man, baby. Yep. He's a reasonable man. <laughs> Let's go. What do you think, Bill? Bill's minus two and a half. 
Josh Allen to Josh throw Allen one. Josh Allen to throw one, 100%. I love all of that. James Cook to run one. He's injured at the moment, so maybe someone else. Jake the snake. Jake the snake. <laughs> all right. Jake the snake. We just don't fly uh, but, like, We don't know. All right, so then we won't do you know James what, Jake, Cook. You know what you are on this? You're like the, our financial advisor, and every week we're sitting there going, like, I'm buying a boat. You're like, hey, you know, you might want to just rent one this weekend. <laughs> uh, what else do we do? Josh uh, Allen over over uh, under over fifteen rushing yards. I mean, that's, what, what, yes. What, what, what's yes. the over under this week? Um, million tabs. Dude, I like Josh Allen to run for fifteen yards. Don't you? Forty-one. I like that bet, Paul. God damn it! Which one? I like I like what you just said. Yeah, Josh Allen to run to rush over fifteen yards. Hey, Paul, it's October. I'm drafting behind you like a bike race. I'm, I'm not going to question you. So we'll do this. Josh Allen, anytime touchdown. Josh Allen to rush for 15, more than 15 yards. And Bills to win by a field goal. That's, I love it. Let's do there it. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Let's do it. There it is. All right, guys. This is, uh, this is our picks for week number six. Uh, next time I'll be normally in my in my normal studio, but uh, there you go, there you have it. Please download the BetMGM app on your device. Put uh, a minimum as as low as ten dollars, a minimum of ten dollars in deposit, and uh, you will get fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets. We're still doing the touchdown um, thing, right? Touchdown, the first touchdown. Uh, you bet on who's going to get the first touchdown. If that person does not get the first touchdown, but in fact they get the second touchdown, you will still get the the, the bet, right, uh, Andrew? Hey, real quick, shout out to Washington Huskies. Uh, great win yes. last week oh, against great game. Michigan. Um, underrated stadium. All you people out there that live in the Midwest, now that the Huskies are in the Big Ten, if your team plays them out there, you won't regret going to go see them. And shame on all those fucking rats that uploaded that video of that guy in Michigan saying, telling that fucking kid, I'll beat the fuck out of you. That's exactly what he should have said. No, you yep. fucking assholes. Quit ratting out people. Say, threaten someone that deserves to be threatened. All right, I said my piece. That's it. All right. We'll see you next week. Happy gambling, everybody. They should have thrown that kid to the whole Michigan team. You know team. what I wish I did when he was yelling at all those Michigan kids? I wish I just grabbed his legs and fucking sent him over down with the lines. Be like, now talk some shit. <laughs> Yeah. Fucking pussy. Uh Fucking all right. Pussy. Great way. Great way to end. <laughs> I agree. Great way to end the show. Uh there's the picks. Check out Reasonable Man on my YouTube channel right now. Enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy football. Bet responsibly. Take care, guys. All right, we'll see you.